Good morning, everybody. We have a nice little content warning for you. Heroes of Asteria Unearthed Inheritance is intended for mature audiences and may cover or include... The birds are really throwing me here. <laughs> may cover adult language, alcohol, alien invasion, amnesia, animal cruelty, fantasy creatures, slain, and or mistreated, apocalypse. Holy shit. This is a nightmare. Um, blood civilization collapse corruption claustrophobia danger to children death fantasy violence gore guns kidnapping mental illness natural disasters political manipulation pregnancy miscarriage fade to black religion fantasy romance slavery water crisis and war so these are all things that we take very seriously and we wanted to give you this warning as we move in so we will see you in just a second Hello, hello, morning, morning. everybody, and yes. <laughs> a content warning. But <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Heroes of Hysteria: Unearthed Inheritance. Uh, David, would you like to tell us a little bit about this game? Yes, yes, guys, welcome to. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Heroes of Hysteria. This is the Unearthed Inheritance campaign. Um, this is a campaign set in a post-apocalyptic world, um, and as I'm sure you saw by the contents, you can expect some dark fantasy. Very excited here. Um, yeah. I think we have our two fantastic players. Uh, this is a duo campaign. Let's see. Uh, do we want to do intros? Yeah. 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 Hi, everybody. My name is Alec. My pronouns are EM. You can find me all places on the internet at CommuneDM, where I do all sorts of TTRPG content. You can find me here as Finn Reese. And tonight, premiering as the archivist, Known Realms Tolesh. We've been pushed back twice, but the game is coming to your Twitch channel tonight, this evening at 6 p.m. EST. So uh, we, this has been a labor of love, a labor indeed, but uh, happy to be here. And... Button. <laughs> button. Uh, <laughs> my name is Button. My pronouns are they, them. I am on the internet, mm. on the places, whose names I can't remember because my brain goes smooth whenever I have to do these. <laughs> I'm blue, blue button on the stuff and things. <laughs> and I play Cress every other Sunday right here on twitch.tv slash DM. And tonight I'm going to start playing Redacted Unknown Realms Talash, even though I think most of you know, because I can't keep a secret. <laughs> That's it. I don't know, and I'm very curious. I'm really excited okay. to watch that tonight. Oh, it's going to be a so lot that's of... That's going to be fun for me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we really... I decided, I decided to break... The uh, you meet in a tavern uh, and do mm -hmm. something real fun. Uh, I'm so scared. <laughs> nice. I'm so afraid. Oh no, is it lagging? Hmm. I'm not seeing any frame drops here, so I'd say maybe just uh, refresh and see what's going on. I apologize. But, um, yeah, and the announcements, I suppose, are the next best thing. I haven't streamed in ages. Well, I streamed two weeks ago. Uh, Sky socials are the best way to stay in contact with us and see what we're doing and when we're doing it. Uh, YouTube is finally up to date. So you're able to go there. Session one of Unearthed Inheritance is up. You'll be able to catch that. And you'll be able to catch these sessions and those edited VODs up on YouTube uh, about a week or so after they launch here on Twitch. So that's uh, incredibly exciting. So we're happy that, that uh, Alec is able to do that now. Um, yeah, yeah, me. Um, once again, this is Unearthed Inheritance. So a little blurb about the campaign. It's a lot of fun. We did one session and it was a joy. Be sure to go check out Heroes of Hysteria. Sansi Saga over on Delta Crypted on YouTube uh, is a uh, counterpart campaign They're doing incredible things that is where crest joined us from and so uh show them all the love all the support they're they're an amazing crew and deserve it um and ooh, i'm missing something soundtail guys soundtail is the amazing amazing service that gives you the music you hear in your wonderful ears i assume your ears are wonderful because you're wonderful um yeah <laughs> We're all so fucking smooth, Brandon. <laughs> it's gonna be great. This is good. Oh. Guys, this is gonna just be so you know. Quality content incoming. 
We sat with the captions for like five minutes just saying fantasy place names to see what it would say instead. This is true. We're so smooth. With that, uh, I don't think I have any other announcements. We love you. Yeah, that one. We love Steal you. From Adam. There's one. Steal from Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Adam. Go check him out. He's great. Go check him out. David, the ball. Got it. Hey, caught it this time. Woo! I got it this time. King Progress. shit. We're doing it. Okay. All right, ball. You sit right here. Let's do this. All right. You guys ready? Ball. Yeah. I'm scared. Right. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So at our previous session, uh, we saw the fated meeting of Cress Estuary and Finn Reese in the heart of the Ironwood Village, a small yet resilient oasis of civilization in a battered world. After making each other's acquaintances, uh, you checked in with Elda Earthbreaker, the Hill Dwarf Sage of the Ironwood. Press revealed that a Herengon Druid, a pillar of the Ironwood community, um, Mal Smith, lovingly referred to as Granny Mal, might not only be alive, but also in the town, a nearby town of Damerel. And so a proposal came forward, a mission to head to Damerel to rescue Granny Smith. It was recommended that you share the news with Penn Smith, the last living relation to Granny Mal, um, and this news came as quite a boon to them, uh, having recently suffered the loss of the Smith family. And it was believed that their fluffle, the family group of a group of Herengon, was lost in the last wave. Amidst this meeting, uh, a Pomerantula appeared, a Pomerantula named Curly, a creature an arachnid species endemic to the Ironwood region. Curly then led you all into the Smith Underburrows, where you met the goblin caretaker of the Smith Fluffle, Gick, and you were able to unearth the missing children who had been petrified to protect them and keep them safe while they waited, awaited rescue in these dank caves. You brought them back to Elda and uh, with Penn, you left them in their care and after some decompression, a delicious meal, Press then began a trance under the watchful eye of their draconic companion, Cuthbert, while Finn assumed his scheduled watch amid the Ironwoods, well, along the Ironwoods perimeter. And that is where we are going to pick up, um, starting with Cress, who, as you begin your trance, Cuthbert kind of curled around you. Right? You can feel bellows of his of his lungs and his ribs kind of pressed up against you supporting you the neck kind of cradles around resting the head in your lap as he pulls the wing over to kind of make almost like a little bit of a tent um and just kind of housing you in there Finn, as you walk away you can just kind of just barely make crest out underneath the underneath the wing as they assume their trance crest as you go into your trance give us a, a little bit of what that looks like oh man um it's their eyes Blows and the waking world fades, blurs, and disappears from their vision. Um, that line of light just before you close your eyes expands once more, but rather than the waking world as they saw it, the burrows, they are now staring at this speckled sky through leagues and leagues of water light streaming down through this deep and alive blue, this swirl of water that they know no longer exists. Um, yeah. And they float there for a moment in this liminal space surrounded on all sides by light and shadow, the movement of a current that is real because they wish it so in this space. watch the water kind of move through this space, playing with the corals, right? You're seeing fans of seaweed and, you know, different um, groups of kelp colored and kind of glimmering with light as it passes through. And you see there's a spray of bubbles and you hear kind of this echoing beating around you as you are joined by this almost aquatic seeming dragonfly with a tail that kind of curls up a little bit like a seahorse here. Um, he's large membranous wings with multifaceted um, kind of playing across like a rainbow of light as you are joined by this creature its eyes kind of taking you in and you feel an immediate sense of kinship as 
creature speaks to you in your mind. Cress, you're back. Hello, Varen. They study this creature for what feels like a while. Pondering something that they were told only a few days ago. Button, do you want to lean into your mic a little bit? You're kind of trailing off a little bit. Sorry. Okay. Um, Varen, is there anything you want to say to me? To say to you, Cress? I'm happy you're here. I'm happy we can talk, that we've finally found each other. Is everything okay? I mean, no, but it's all right. Um, I would like to go visit that strange man. Do you remember the last time we visited him? The shadows came for us. The one that we met in the dragon's dream. Yes. Hmm. We can try. It's he's not a creature of the dream. It's something else, but I think I know where we can learn more. All right. Where would that be? It would be the Garden of Flowers. A place just near the edge of the dreamscape. Where creatures like that one would visit. But, and as you guys are talking, you're kind of moving through that ocean space. You're swimming past, you know, large multicolored schools of fish, dolphins kind of twisting in and out. And as they kind of dip between shadow and light, they even change shape and color. Um, as they kind of glide around, they'll jump out of the water above. You just see kind of holes into the night sky as the water kind of closes back and as they kind of come down streams of bubbles. Um, and Varen says, this place is dangerous though, Cress. We have to be careful. The darkness has been through there. There's not much left. We, sh we shouldn't tarry too long. That's all right. We don't have to. Baron, how do you know all of this? I'm of the dream. Many creatures dream. I know it because it's part of my world. It's part of me. It's a part of you. And why don't I know it? It's hard to say. I'm from the waking world. Sometimes your your people miss things. As the two of you kind of continue forward, gliding past, you see again schools of whales, you know, kind of pods of whales. That's what they kind of travel in. I know things um, as they kind of make their way upwards towards the surface. You see them kind of moving as this large group and they break the water surface and they drift off. You look around expecting them to come back down, but they never really do as they just kind of continue into the sky after. And Shall I we... think... Hmm? Good. They watch these pods of whales disappear into the sky. Is that still the dreaming world? I want to map this place, Varen. I want to know it. Mm. The dreaming world. It's shaped by the dreamers. To map it, we quarry have names for spaces. 
different places within the dreaming, but the roads there, the ways there, are different. Moving from dream to dream is a matter of intention and control. We quarry are part of the dream. We move through it easily. That's how I can take you anywhere in the dreaming. But there are certain places that are safer than others. Do the dead dream? The dead don't. The dead are not connected to the dreaming. Any creature that closes its eyes possesses an intention and a consciousness can be part of the dream with some exceptions roll a nature check Chris nature that was such a journey this honestly that... this honestly might this should be an advantage ooh nice oh nope um nature 15 it's easy enough because this is more like a nature just kind of jog your memory about something. And that is that elves do not dream. Mm -hmm. They trance. So right. among creatures that you know are living in conscious and stuff as per Baron's definition, this might be one of those things that kind of stands out to you being a, one of the few elves that seems to be able to enter into the dream. Right. Right, but they've also known two other exceptions to that. They correct? have. Yes, yes, you do. That is true. Why is it that I can visit Anatole and Pascal? Hmm. Anatole. Anatole, as far as I can tell, is a dreamer. He knows how to connect to seems to do so naturally. The other one, he was not of the dream. When we when we encountered him, I could tell he wasn't meant to be there. He forced himself there into the dream. All right. That's why that's why he was able to travel to to our dream. When he held your hand, you he was able to transfer into your dream. But he's not a dreamwalker, and he's not of the dream. He's almost an invader. Well, that tracks. I guess we'll have to explore that another day, though. Shall we take you to the garden? Yes, please. You, as the two of you are kind of moving, you offered a wonderful description a while back of Baron and Cress kind of embodying, becoming sort of one body as you move through the dream. Can you offer that up again for us, please? Absolutely. Um... The two of them swimming side by side, this aquatic dragonfly with these um, prismatic wings unfurled, and this sea elf with this beta fish esque hair in yellows and oranges flowing behind them. Um, I think Cress, this natural swimmer, the century of their life has seen them living in this space. They flip underneath Varen so that they are facing each other, face to face. And they just take in this entity for a second before turning back over and extending their arms. And Varen sinks down into them, their, their emelinastic teal and white skin becoming this silver. Their wings merging with Cress's arms as they take on this... Um, stained glass window um, appearance. The deep blue eye 
staying in the left and the silver eye appearing in the right, their legs becoming one with this tail as suddenly silver is speckled with the fish scales of the sea elf, the bright yellows, the teal, the orange, the white. And they begin to move as one through the dream. You guys travel through that water. By the way, I don't know if you have it already, but take an inspiration. I didn't. Yes. <laughs> I could never hope to describe that quite as beautifully as you do. So thank you for that. You move through from your dream through some darker, deeper trenches that start to feel, you can tell when you've kind of left your dream, it gets colder, it gets a little bit darker, right? It feels kind of open, kind of like standing when you, you ever have that feeling when you're standing like an open field and you're just kind of unsure if there's anything else around. It's like that for just a moment until you reach the surface. And as you kind of step out and climb out, you find that you walk forward, you're able to kind of climb up and walk forward and there's no water behind you. It seems like you just kind of entered some sort of magical portal kind of thing. But now you find yourself in this empty, desolate place. The ground is sort of the softly glinting dark gray. There is a pitch black sky above. No real features to it, but still there is a light to this place. You can see it is not dark, but it is empty, aside from this kind of desolate wasteland. And Baron whispers in your mind, Garden. Garden is gone. Not, I have not been to this place for some time, for a long time, since the darkness came to the dream. But I had known that it started here, along the edge of the dreaming. The darkness did? This place was once a field of all manner of flowers of all different colors, a vibrant light surrounding the dreaming. It is said that those flowers were the stray dreams, wishes, desires of the dreamers. And they would grow here. And creatures like Van Zayed, creatures that would visit the dream, but not be of the dream, would pick these flowers. And they would know things about the ones who grew them. Two of you are just kind of walking now through this just empty gray waste. I'd like to look for any remaining seeds. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Roll a perception check. Be nice to me. It's nice. Um, 24. Okay. It takes some time, but as the two of you are kind of like walking through this, this hollow space, this vacant space, you've never felt quite such a void like this, Crescent. I mean, you've swum in deep ocean, swam in deep, dark ocean where it's, if you hang there for a moment, you can't even tell what's up or down. It's just pure blue around you. You've been in that kind of void before. But this, even with the ground beneath you, feels just vacant. But as you explore, you cross over these dark dunes, and you eventually come across something, a small light in the distance. And as you approach, you find not only seeds, not seeds, but a golden rose. You find a golden rose growing in this barren wasteland, growing boldly as it stands up. You see these two intertwined stems leading from it. You see sharp thorns along it. The petals are kind of wilting in this rough coppery color just at the tips and the edges. 
Varian looks at it and says, That should be impossible. But it's not. I don't know what to do. Be wrong to try and take care of it. It was... The sincere wish of someone. Someone of immense dedication and sincerity to grow an intention to grow something here so I leave it is that what you're saying it's up to you I worry if we leave it the darkness comes back and finds it it'll be gone I don't know if it will grow here, and I also don't know if the things that came here to tend to this garden would ever come back. Very little prince-like. They would like to summon sort of a wide bell jar okay. to place over the rose and try and take it like with the earth that it's growing in. Um, out of this space, like into okay. this terrarium almost. Sure. Lots okay. of terrariums in my life. Yes. Um, roll, we'll call this just a wisdom check. Use your wisdom modifier. D20 and a wisdom modifier. Uh, 19. Okay. Yeah. So you're able to create this, right? So you, you have the jar, right? Um, and now going in to kind of scoop it in, right? So you that was to summon it. I want one more check to encase it. And we'll call this kind of an open skill challenge. You can flavor your intention here. This is the dreamscape, right? So you can feel free to flavor and take it how you'd like in terms of your approach. Okay. So this is kind of weird, but I think given the circumstances, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> make it weird. <laughs> Um, I want to do survival, if that's possible. That seems very fitting. Go ahead. We're in we're in a barren wasteland, both in the dreaming and in real life. Uh, um, it's a nine on the dice, but it's a total of 16, because I'm good at that. Chris, that is amazing, because that is exactly the DC I had set in my notes. <gasps> so you've made it, you've beat it. Um, you were able to kind of slide the contraption. I, well, how would you do it? Like, what, give us give us a look. I think um, because they've manifested this in the dreamscape, it's almost shifting. So they have like a glass bell jar and then a glass spade. And as they scoop mm -hmm. the spade into the soil and lift it into the bell jar, it merges and kind of becomes a complete orb mm -hmm. of glass. You know, with that, I'm, I'm I'm tempted to almost redact your... Oh, you have your proficiency anyway. Because uh, you have herbalism, I believe. Or you are an experienced herbalist. Oh, I am! Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this this is actually fairly routine for you then. You're right? This is almost practice. This is a skill that you've brought with you from the real world into the dreaming. Um, and this, this union of both practicality and imagination definitely helps you succeed in extracting this plant and removing it from here. It seems it's it's alive. It is now encased in here. You have this twice stemmed golden rose. So there are two stems and it's one rose. Yes. Like, yeah, they kind of like, like a kind double of, helix. Yes, exactly. Exactly kinda of like a double helix. Except some parts are like kind of twist and bend, right? And you can tell you can see there's actually a lot of thorns to this thing, right? It's certainly when, when I say it was a bold rose, I mean, this thing you look like, if you, if you try to handle it, it might bite back. Um, <laughs> with these kind of twists kind of going up the side, kind of projecting thorns in all sorts of random directions. But it reaches the base of the flower, and it kind of goes up. Um, it's not totally in bloom. It's still fairly tightly compacted. But you can see just along the edges of the petals, where it's kind of turned this kind of rough kind of copper. Um, especially on the outer petals, you see some, almost like it was starting to kind of wilt in copper. Um, but it is now in your possession, safe in your glass 
sphere. Your glass dream sphere. And as you kind of scoop it up, um, Varian goes, This is special. Thank you, Chris. Well, I figure if someone's wishing for something that hard, we ought to protect it, right? Agreed. Shall we? We should head back. I worry that the darkness will find us soon in this place. Yeah. Yeah, I feel guilty. I had so many questions for Van Zayed. Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, Varen. I'm not... I just keep misstepping. None of us know what we're doing. forward but at least you don't have to do it alone I'm with you and we have Cuthbert we'll find a way a way to what Varen what do you think I'm trying to do All I know is, I feel like we're doing the right thing. And you can kind of feel, as you kind of are moving now back through that kind of voided space, back towards the ocean of your own dream, you can see Varen kind of reflected in the glass, almost like a sheen kind of going around the glass. And with this in your possession now, Cress. I would like you to add the following to your character sheet as a bond. I'll just kind of copy and paste it so it'll be easier for you to just add it into your sheet. I don't um, know what that means. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so when you go to your character sheet, it's really just more of like a flavor thing. Um, but down in the character sheet where you should have kind of like your bonds, uh, flaws, ideals, that kind of stuff. Yes, right. Yes. You can add a custom one, and it is going to say, I don't know why it sends it as an image. Thank you very much, Microsoft OneNote. Um, but <laughs> you get the bond, it reads, Hope. I see signs that all is not yet lost. I will deliver the strength needed to ignite hope in others. Aw, that's very lovely. I will add that. So two of you make it back to your dream. Is there anything else you'd like to ask of Varen or information? Oh, you... oh well, sorry, before we move on, something I've noticed well. Um, you can, right, um, add things like this as like symbols to your uh, like quarry tattoo scape as well. Mm. Right? So if you choose now that you've collected this bond from the dream, that can also be applied to you as like a, like almost like added to your character's features in the okay. form of a tattoo, similar to how the quarries will often add tattoos to their Kalish stars, right? So this could this would be one of those things. Well, that's very well. cool. You can add it yeah. in whatever scale or position you like, but it can easily appear on you. I think. On your person. Yeah. Without noticing, um, from the black spot on their palm, hmm. this little, right now it's just a little bud that starts to grow toward their wrist. Hmm. That is fan-fucking-tastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excuse the language. <laughs> but I love that shit. Okay. Um, they would like to ask... Baron, do you know any of the Inakathendic? Hmm. They are... unknown to me. I know that they are a tribe that roams the Dreaming, but they are careful, secretive. They operate 
quietly in the dreaming. But I imagine in the material world, perhaps it might be easier to gain information. Following, trying to trace one of the inakathendic through the dream would be like chasing dandelions in a storm. They move erratically in a way that only they seems only seems to make sense to them. Their quarry are different, wild. Right. Thank you. So, so there's this discomfort that crosses their face. So my my father wasn't one then. No. But I do know that there could be others, others connected to me. I can look for them, but if I do, I might have to be quiet for a while. I might be gone for a bit. I don't even know if they'd want to see me. You don't have to do this. If you ever need me to, I can try to find them. They knew where to find me for a century, and they didn't, so I think we're, um, fine. They say mm -hmm. there's, there's a bitterness. Mm, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you, Varen. Thank you, Chris. Come back soon. Yeah, I will. Um, and you will come to wakefulness here in just a second. Um, uh, Finn. No, I want to spend, I want to spend the next three hours watching this if I can, if at all possible. Well, this is great. We can maybe, we can possibly arrange something. Fuck yeah, dude. I just want to, I just want to sit back, refill my coffee and just watch <laughs> this beautiful <laughs> RP happen. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, David. I apologize. Well, it's your turn now, my friend. No! As, okay. Uh, prepare for the carnage. Oh, sick. Roll initiative. Yeah. Um, I don't even have dice out. I'm such a bad dandy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Finn, as you are kind of on watch, Cress yeah. uh, undergoing the trance, mm. um, and mm -hmm. you are kind of roaming along, you know, kind of taking your patrol along the perimeter walls. Yep. Um, just in different sections of the Ironwood. Um, you can counter different, you know, Ironborn Rangers who are also on watch as you kind of make your way by. They kind of nod. Hey, Master Reese. Master no one. Good to see you, though. How do you fare? Yeah, fine enough. Just venturing about. How goes your um, rangering? Well, all quiet on the southern front for now. It's good but to hear. He's, he's, we've heard quite a bit. Uh, apparently, a visitor with a Drake. Oh yeah. We've heard you've been traveling with them. For about the last day, yeah. Why do you ask? New person in town, with the dragon no less, certainly warrants attention. I understand the world is the way it is, but... Fear... isn't always a good thing to latch on to, friend. Your suspicions are warranted, but I get nothing but good intention from this individual, and they're very, very pretty rider. <laughs> well, that's reassuring. Of course. Uh, do you know what their intention is in, in the town? I'm not much, much to speak on someone's el someone else's intention, but uh, I know they spoke with Lady Elder. I was there, and it was all positive. Things that...
things that may help bring some hope back to the Ironwood. It's good. It's good. It's reassuring. Thank you. Setting us, setting our minds at ease. Least I can do in a turbulent time such as this. We appreciate all of your assistance, not only in rebuilding, but also assisting those of us most in need. We all leave a mark. I intend to make mine a good one. Happy to help, as always. Of course. Well, um, I'm sure you know, but should you ever need the assistance of our of our outfit, the Rangers, of course, you can always speak to our commander, Lenza. Lenza. Of course. L e n s a. A high elf. You've seen this individual around town before. Sure. Um, being you know one of the Ironborn, being the lead ranger yeah. um you know you've communicated and stuff with them coordinated non different operations scouts that kind of stuff okay. um well hopefully it'll be a continue to be a quiet night <laughs> ideally that'd be um that'd be really nice yeah roll a perception check fuck <laughs> <laughs> huh no Oh, not terrible. That was Chekhov's threat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, David was loading again. Be like, you feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> um, perception. Sliding it along the table. Uh, yeah. Fifteen. Fourteen plus one. That's excellent. Um, you're you stand on the parapets, looking out over the broken ironwood region broken the broken forest trees toppled below you as you stand raised up on these earth this earthen rise that you know was artificial this artificial earthen rise and as you stand out looking you see the trees many of them toppled and broken right small roads cleared away by yourself and other rangers and the townsfolk as you've you know, begun kind of exploring the region. Yep. You're looking out towards kind of the southwest. You can see a thin line of orange just along the horizon where the sun has basically perpetually set ever since the world ended. Behind you, darker skies, just the beginning of starlight up along the edge. Watch goes by uneventful. Press uh, awakens. You see Cuthbert stir. Keep sleeping. I know you need more. <laughs> and it nuzzles back and rests back down. But lets you opens the wing tent. <laughs> <laughs> they emerge such good from the imagery. wing tent. Just like a little way. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. I think their hand just lingers on him for a long time. Do, does the rose bring to mind Cuthbert at all? Well, there's certainly the golden factor, right? Um, but beyond that, I would say nothing particularly about it. You kind of examine it as you kind of examine him and you kind of like take him in. Um, even with a check, there would be nothing really there other than the, again, the gold through line, but that's about it. Okay. So this is not Cuthbert's wish. They can kind of surmise whatever it was they picked. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to assume, but it wouldn't it, be a, a bad guess, I would say. It make that would be a sensible assumption. Okay. Um So they awake or they rise out of their trance. Um Cuthbert they know that Cuthbert has to sleep another four hours and they're aware that Finn has to sleep eight um mm -hmm. before they can do any sort of traveling. Is anybody supposed to relieve? They'll pop their head into where Finn is. Um, usually someone comes up and taps me on the shoulder, tells me I'm done. My six, eight, not seven, six shoulder. Um, <laughs> You're still quite tall. It's still yes. quite tall, but it's still it's still an arm's reach. <laughs> a bit of a a bit of an idiot. Um, yeah, usually somebody comes and taps me on the shoulder. 
tells me it's time to leave. But, um, after this I'm gonna make my way to Sage Elder. Uh, if you'd like to tag along. Uh, absolutely. Right. Unless you think it's not appropriate. I don't... If I'm to travel with you, which is what I'm gonna go plead to do, uh, seems mighty appropriate. It's appreciated. As I... As I told a few rangers this morning, um, your intentions seem very true, very good to, to me in the slightest, and the people of the Ironwood have done right by me, and if I can help bring just a little bit of hope back by traveling with you, then there's the least I can do for myself, the people of the Ironwood, and you. Happy to help. I think that's a bit of a catchphrase at this point, but... <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. It's a fairly good one. Finn Reese, happy to help. Happy to help. <laughs> well. well, I will come with you. Appreciate it. Um, Cuthbert's sleeping on the interior, correct? Yes. He's not yeah, yeah. like... Okay. No, no, no. Like there's, Making so sure there's I'm still... not leaving him in a dangerous place. <laughs> no, no, no. Very safe place, very safe place. And uh, other Ironborn Rangers kind of like walking around and stuff. Like you can see, this is, these are some of the lower um, columns, mm. right? Um, a lot of the Rangers kind of patrol down here. A lot of the community kind of lives on the higher stuff, right? Got it. So definitely safe. And I imagine once he is relieved and somebody else takes over, mm -hmm. he will. Yep. Yeah, in short order, hit, someone comes over. He'll let them know Cuthbert's asleep. <laughs> Just really, <laughs> pay him no mind sleeping yeah as as you can you see the ranger kind of as he's as they're walking up to kind of relieve you you see a um uh a halfling right kind of like <laughs> ruddy brown hair freckled face young right yeah. um a, a young a kid who's had to grow up quickly given mm -hmm. the state of the world mm -hmm. right and then actually get inducted into the rangers and you know there's a, quite a few among them um who are green very green in terms of their world experience. Uh, walks forward and kind of eyes Cuthbert warily and uh, one evening, Master Finn. Um, here to uh, the sort of for you. He'll sort of like <laughs> lean down, Master No One. Finn's more than fine. So I know this is fresh. This is new. This is different. Pay no mind to Cuthbert. Cuthbert's fine. Cuthbert's sleeping. No danger to you. Looks back at Crest like, no danger to anyone? <laughs> he only bites if you bite first. So don't bite Cuthbert. And I think everything's <laughs> going to be fine. But I, I can do that. Keep your head on a swing. I cannot do that. <laughs> it, I know what you meant. This is like tap him on the You're more than fine. <laughs> Keep your head on a swivel. Take deep breaths. You got this. You're going to be more than fine. If I can do it, you can do it. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Master Finn. 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 I'll take it from here then. Good. Have a good watch. Steps forward, kind of takes the post. Um, short bow, kind of in and uh, pointing to the ground, and he kind of rests his hand on it. You can hear as he as you're walking away, you can go. Do it. Is he barely able to look over the top of the palisades of the parapets? Do you need a stool? <laughs> <laughs> Don't patronize him. I'm not. I was just asking to help. Starts moving a barrel and okay. moving a crate oh, over. It. <laughs> I wasn't trying to patronize. It's not. It's not in my nature. Yet. All right. Yet. I imagine, um, I imagine we'll get there. <laughs> all right. So the two of you. Um, Make your way over to Elda's. You can yeah. walk and talk about anything you'd like. Otherwise, we can pick up there. How'd you sleep? So what? Oh, I don't sleep. I dream. Um, Wait a minute. It was how can you, <laughs> fine. How could you not sleep but also dream at the same time? It's deeply interesting. Yeah, it is. How was your watch? Keep your secrets. 
Okay. Uh, good. Uneventful. I chatted with a few of the rangers. Uh, interested uh, of your, about your presence, but ensured them that it was good. It was good things. I'll get out of my. I'll get out of their hair before I um, overstay my welcome. No, you're. You can travel freely, but you're not bothering anyone. I think it's just with the way things are, people are scared. But I'm doing my best just to just to make a little bit of hope possible. So. That is a noble pursuit. What? You were here, you said, starting in like January, February. You've been here a while. Yeah. Where do you hail from? North. All right, keep your secret. <laughs> uh, a few ranges up, up north, but left family a little bit. Just and you haven't haven't had time to make it back up there yet. It's on my to-do right. list. Right. So I figure Damaril's a good start and I've been itching to move a little bit selfishly. I enjoy helping the folk here but there are things I'd like to do. Well, if you're helping me with Damaril, then it seems only fair if I'd help you. Only if it's not putting you out. I got nowhere to be. Puts a, a big hand out to shake. I shake it. To help Tiny him. hand, a big hand. <laughs> to help him. Oh. Great. A handshake as you guys are aboard the final lift you've gone through a series of lifts to kind of travel up the columns in quick uh fashion um it's kind of go as it kind of raises up forward up higher uh you make your handshake as you reach the top and enter into the stone that that stone column you see that one particularly large gnarled ironwood tree uh the sick one press you always get that sickly feeling as you, as it looms over you and you enter in below. Um, you travel downwards through the dark tunnels, darkened tunnels. There are light sources. You can see lots of people now are, at this hour, still resting, sleeping, kind of crammed rooms, lots of humanity, cuddled up close. A few folks still awake as they kind of mutter softly. You know, maybe they play cards, that kind of stuff. They recollect over the day. Um, make Ooh. Looks like we're having a little bit of a Discord issue. Give us one sec. Sin. You're frozen. Come there you go. You Everybody's back. back. Okay. Unfroze. Yeah, we there was a, a little bit of a thing. I'll fix that at break. Okay, you're back. Sorry, everybody. Um. So yeah, you are making your way down, and as you guys are kind of nearing the bottom, where Elda's and the the dwarven girls' uh, chambers reside. Um. Perception checks from the pair of you, please. Wow! I rolled a two. So... Nine. Sixteen. Nine. Sixteen. Okay, Cress, you're kind of taking in the, the the corruption around you is just kind of making you feel a little uneasy, right? Messing with your senses a bit. Uh, Finn, you've walked down this quite often. You know, this is a path that you know. Um, the sounds, the sights are all familiar to you. As you make your way down, though, a new sound is added to the medley as you start to hear high-pitched voices. You hear what sounds like arguing. You hear the excited yapping of the little dog that it resides on there as you get closer. Um, and as you kind of approach, again, there's kind of like a curtain that kind of divides the room um, where the girl is. You see two bird figures with long ears 
being chased by a dog as they run out into the hallway before you. Um, laughing, carrying on as you see two young heron gone children emerge, right? Um, and they're like, it was mine. I got it first. <laughs> no, give it back. It's supposed to be for the girl. It's supposed to be for Hilda. <laughs> and the dog kind of following out, right? You see the little boy has like a little, um, like a little piece of toast in his hand, right? The little, one mm-hmm. of the little young heron gone boys. And he goes, I'm hungry. I've been in stone for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> She's had lots of berries. Right? And, the, and you see after a while, uh, uh, the goblin, Gick, kind of emerge um, with a hatchet in hand and goes, give the girl back her bread or I'm taking the hand. <laughs> Gick. <laughs> Good lord. Boy, kind of. <laughs> Sorry, Gick. Post back over. <clears throat> Is that any way to behave? <laughs> what would your grandmother think? Gick, I respect your methods, but you cannot threaten children with hatchets. It seemed to work, though. I know, but you can't do it. <sighs> Following them in, uh, you see. Three heron gaunt children have been petrified. Hilda is sitting on the chair, watching them as they kind of move around. The dog, the little uh, little mutt, is loving all the activity and the attention. Um, Gick is working over a stove, um, moving pieces of toast um, with this kind of like um, grape jelly, and he's kind of slathering all over it. Um, you see one of the little heron god children kind of dips a finger in the, the thing, Gick turns, ah. um, <laughs> and Elda is sitting with Pen in the corner as the two of you enter. And Pen is just beaming ear to ear, which is for heron god, it's pretty significant. It kind of goes up. Um, <laughs> as it's almost <laughs> horrific it's if you little, think about it. Maybe it's a little creepy. Yes. Oh this my goodness. <laughs> teeth. Never mind. Let's take, let's yeah. take that one. Back. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Wide open grid. <laughs> I don't know what's better. Nothing um, is scarier than a joyous rabbit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you this made is, a lot of this progress. This is horror camping. Oh, uh, no. And Elda, at, at your comment, uh, Elda's um, sitting at the table and goes, it requires quite a bit of magic, as you would imagine, to unpetrify, but in a few days, we'll have the rest of them up and about. That is incredible. Very impressive. And uh, Pen runs forward and just an arm, arms reach around and grab both of you. This is all thanks to you guys. Thank you so much. I had no idea that that spider was trying to tell us the whole time. And he's kind of looking at you, Chris. Thank you. Really. It's Gick you have to thank. That was some quick thinking. They're they're beaming at Gick. I think... Again, he's come he's come a long way from the individual they met a couple months ago. And for them it's been under a week in terms mm-hmm. of memory. So yes, it's this is, this is a, pretty a dramatic shock. shift. Yeah. Um I was thinking that um I might be able to teach willin members of the community to learn the dances of the Pomerantulas. I think you can use them to be pretty effective guardians of your your ironwood. That sounds like an interesting proposal. If you ever have the time, absolutely. That would be... I'm sure Jakar can find some like-minded individuals or similarly capable individuals mm. to undertake such a task. Maybe even a few of the Ironborn Rangers be useful. They've got such a good bond with a lot of the creatures already, adding the Pomerantula to their ranks. It'd certainly be a boon. That's wonderful. They look around. Is, um... Is Curly... Or is... Sorry, not Curly. Other baby. Tommy? Tommy, thank you. Sorry. I'm um, done. Is Tommy still, um... Um... Still stone? Not yet. Um... Probably, maybe in the next round, Elda, Miss Elda. We'll possibly, if that is your desire. We did, I've just been, I did the three that I could today. 
That um, was that's impressive. I can't I can't even do that once. <laughs> takes a significant amount of magic, but it's possible. It wouldn't have been without your help though. Um and you see Gick is also now kind of like handed out and allotted toast and stuff like that. And he still kind of goes over and checks on the stone ones. You know, doesn't give them any pieces of toast, but, you know, checks in with them. Um, even offers the girl, the dwarven girl on the rocking chair, a piece and kind of mechanically takes it and starts eating. Um, Elda looks to you. Then. Do you still wish to depart for Damaril? I think it's of the utmost importance. I think it is the, uh... Currently the best use of my skill set. And I think it's going to do a lot of good for... The Ironwood and its people, so yes. It's all I've been able to think about. I've given it a bit of thought myself since you first proposed the idea. I apologize for my reaction wanting to keep you here. To be perfectly honest with you, I thought I could protect you. I am tired of seeing the future buried by the past. But yesterday yourself and Cress managed to dig these children out of the dark. And I realize that perhaps you can deliver that same hope to others. He sort of steps forward res uh, respectfully and, and just kind of leans down and offers his hands uh, to Sage Elda. Takes them. Holds yours back. I appreciate the very brave sentiment of wanting to protect me. It's my job, my lady. When I left home, I... I, mean, I put the intention on myself to... leave an impact every, everywhere I went. I'm unable to do that if I don't go places. And I'm... plenty capable of... protecting myself and those around me. What you should focus on is protecting the ones you have close here. They need it far more than I do. Thank you. And I mute to sneeze. <laughs> Bless you! <laughs> oh no. no. Uh, Three... I think I think we're good. <laughs> you allergic to hill dwarves? No, I'm allergic to dying leaves. Mm. Oh. It's that time of year, my friend. I my sympathies. Uh. Um, thank you, Finn. Of course. For all that you've done, not only what you've these last several weeks in here in the Ironwood, and really these last several months, but even. <laughs> Delivering us here from, from Omeron during the invasion. He looks to the girl. Hilda and I would not have made it here without you. It'll be strange not to have you around for a bit. <laughs> I feel like we've grown close since this. You're a dear friend. As are you. I wish you well on your journey. And if you can bring Mal back, you would have served our purpose. You would have served the Ironwood yet again. Well, I'd be unable to do it without them. Looks over to Cress. So, I think I speak for the both of us when I say that that's, that's the goal. We're going to do what we can to bring that hope back to the Ironwood. And go with the blessing of the Ironwood mm. on 
your journey. Know that you are all both always welcome here. And we look forward to your return, whenever that may be. Mm. Do be sure to make sure you are properly equipped, not only in terms of <laughs> equipment, but perhaps even in knowledge. And some of uh, the rangers have scouted some of the hills to the north. Um, and I believe the young captain, Serena of the Water Drake, mm. has also done some scouting in the lands to the west. Should be good to check in on Serena. Thank you for the for the leads, Elder. Um, Chris, have you had any other questions or? No, I, I think I've got about a number of tasks to do. So I tranced already. What time is it? So your guys' session ended last time, and we'll say about like nine p.m. Your trance mm -hmm. is four hours, so that would bring you up to one a.m. One a.m. Yeah, one a.m. in the morning. May twenty second. Okay, uh, um, but one one a.m. It doesn't mean it's all it's yeah. twilight. It's More, perpetual exactly. twilight. Morning's relative. Yeah. Um, and so Time's I know that some times time is a weird soup. So I think <laughs> they know that they can accomplish tasks while Finn is sleeping. Yep. Um, so I think they. I think I'll just uh, get started preparing. Great. I'm gonna pass out for a wee bit and then I will be good to good to good to go for you guys head out uh, Elda holds both your hands and just says remember strive to see past what the world has become and dare to see it for what it could be Thank you very much. Thank you. Then you, the two of you, depart. Um, making your way up, you find one of the little alcoves, little hollowed out rooms in this earthen column that has functioned as a bed previously for you, where you first woke up just this the day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, um, you can feel free to take your rest if you like. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, I think you, you know, you've only been up for like a handful of hours, right? and I don't know if you've really expended anything. But up to you. I haven't expended anything, but just just to mitigate the risk of exhaustion at some point, I sure. think it just sure, make sure, sure. just makes sense to to do that. So he'll um he'll go up to Cress and just um this looks to be my hovel, so I'm going to uh pass out. For a bit, and um, I'll find you when I wake up. I'm sure. All right, sweet dreams. We'll see. Good luck. Thank you. All right. So Finn, <laughs> he's out. You inspiration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, snore, snore inspiration. inspiration. <laughs> Seriously, go ahead and take the inspiration. I already had one. I we, think. we love. Oh. Oh no, I didn't. Never mind. I, that's yeah, I right. It. I burned it and got a natural one. Fucking I like hate. dick. I like the sound effect of the snore. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Um, Cress. Finn does. We'll say Finn does. Go ahead and just drop pretty close to sleep. Then, um, Cress, roll a quick uh, investigation check. I love 13. how theatrical you, you roll. It's very good. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, a 13, Cress, you, you notice as Finn kind of settles down. Um, some people, you know, who are, again, a lot of folks are cramped into this space, right? You see some folks kind of look over when he, as he kind of squeezes in, they kind of like shift aside and you see them kind of like whispering to each other and kind of glancing back over to Finn as they kind of like offer some space. And it doesn't seem quite like, a, oh, just give him space because he's big. Um, but it seems like they have some kind of like, oh, let's, let's, let's take a rest. Let's give him some space. It seems to be some sort of, um, I don't know if reverence is the word, but, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I think, curious as they are, they're not going to pry and be like, what was that about? Um, <laughs> so they'll just take note. Um, yep. And then they will try and find a, 
space where they can set up with their herbalism kit. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Easy enough. You, you know, you get out of the the column, uh, make your way down the lift, right? Um, and as you arrive down, there's you you kind of kind of now in this marketplace again with that more memorial, right? You see the statues, the flowers, letters, all of those things kind of left out um, in tribute to those to the fallen. Um, there's a temple in this part, but uh, as you kind of ask around, people kind of guide you to another little section, a little bit lower. Um, and there you see there are tents of different colors, right? Different craftsmen at work. Um, actually, you'd previously been in this area when you met Zion, right? Mm -hmm. This seems to be kind of like a little bit of a market kind of s setup, right? And you can easily find a little quiet corner in the shade of the buildings. Um, and yeah, set up your herbalism set, set up. Perfect. They are going to try and take the two hours to create a potion of healing with the more of the manga leaves. So right now sure. I have nine. So yep. I want to take one of those. And sure. Yet. Okay. And I, I think it is. I think it makes sense to do the other thing after this attempt. So oh, we sure. do that. Okay. And um, go for it. I don't know if it's the same, but last time it was two hours and a check of yeah. um, 13. Yeah, that sounds fair to me. And I rolled an 11 on the dice for a 16. Yep. Successfully created is a health potion. Minus one of these guys and another one of these. Um, and then could they take out... <laughs> Wubba Dub Dub's uh, potion recipes and artificing mm. formula. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yes, that is a character name. That is <laughs> a character name. <laughs> that's a person. That's <laughs> um, a furbolg. Um, and I, they would like to start, right now I am not proficient in medicine. Okay. They are just, they just are wise. Um, sure. They would like to start studying these formula as a means of trying to get good. Um, get good. Just starting to work on that process. And I want to know what's in there. Yeah. Um, we'll tell you what, we'll go through the the book, right? Um, at some point before the next session for you, because I do actually have that material. Um, but uh, we'll say, go ahead and roll a... I'll say wisdom or intelligence, your choice, as you're studying and kind of taking this information in. Um, I think because it's medicine, I'm going to do wisdom. Wow. Um, I'm going to use my inspiration. Um, eh. ha! Okay, that's better. Um, it's not great, but it's better. What am I rolling? Wisdom? Wisdom. Uh, 13. The other one was a one. Okay, uh, let's see. 13. I'm trying to just look up the training stuff here. Um, Sorry, I should have... No, you're fine. Um, ...announced my intention to do this. No, you're good. We'll look it up. I'm pretty sure Xanathar's has a thing for this. Okay, um, I'll just track... Yeah, we'll that. track it for now. Okay. So 13 on the but skill they, check. They do that. Okay, um, yeah. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a success on this one, uh, just because one, I don't know the rules, um, and I don't want that to hamstring your progression. So you'll get a check on this. You'll get a success on this one, um, and then as we kind of review the rules and come up with the framework for it, right? We'll have that one counted already. That's very generous. No, oh. um, it's the least I can do for not knowing the information. And I figure what they will do is just wait for Finn to wake up before we go um, info gathering from the rangers. Everything. Okay, sure thing. Yeah, short order. You you work the rest of the of the rest and having major health potions, uh, studying over the the tomes uh, and going through the reci the recipe book of Wubba Dub Dub that you had acquired um, over in the Frog Grove of the Whispering Jungle. And short order, Finn, you are... I keep losing it at Wubba Dub Dub. I'm so sorry. That's okay. 
Wait till you meet him. I'm so smart brained. <laughs> no. Um, and Cress, a after a while, you make you start making your way back up to the, back up to Finn. Um, Finn, in the meantime, though, you are asleep. Mm -hmm. You're resting. Your eyes are closed. Uh huh. And as you sleep, Fuck. <laughs> you find yourself. Standing on the deck of a ship. Fuck. What and I both went in your dream. <laughs> oh, you know what's coming. <laughs> if I if I slow down the tone. <laughs> um you stand on the deck of the ship looking out towards the horizon. Um cliff faces, forests, the ironwood forests to your right off the starboard side, as you're heading along the coast. And the sky starts to turn, and you recognize what's it starts to feel again that familiar place. As you look to the side, you see the storm brewing, the white caps forming on the surface of the water. Shadin, the blue dragonborn, standing at the helm, looking out, you see lights of the, the pixies that crew the ship. Just kind of blinking into existence momentarily and blinking out. Uh, Pen, Aaron Gaunt, your hand gone companion, kind of racing around, you know, tending to little different things on the deck as you stare outwards. What is Finn thinking about and feeling in this moment as you find yourself in this place again? Um, yeah, I think it's just dread. I think that there is this, like... this hopelessness that is all-consuming. Um, given the outcome, that has not changed every time he's had this dream. Um, so I think, a bit sluggishly, he, um, he just sort of stands and, and begins to do the work which is just there's a lot of resignation I think tonight mechanically get to work pulling lines tying them off as the sky changes you feel the wind shift the sails kind of go from bagging on one side to bagging on the other Shadin and Pen you see them kind of going through the motions, noticing the storm, the voices calling out, they're turning to you, they're yelling. Again, they're sounding kind of like this hollow echo as the sound kind of echoes around you as they're kind of calling to you. Um, see the ship start to kind of swing. All right, still kind of going through the motions, grabbing the lines, tying things off, going as best you can. Uh, give me an athletics check. And, the same, and as well, we'll also take a sleight of hand check. God damn it. 15 for the athletics check. The athletics. It's cocked. Uh, oh, side of hand I have advantage on. Oh. Um. Seven. Okay. Um, with a seven. On side of hand. Mm. Okay. Uh, with a 15, you grab a line, you kind of pull it in, the wind kind of picks up, right? Bagging the sail, but you're able to kind of hold on to it. Um, you turn to go and get it tied off, but the as waves start to kind of splash, your hands start to slip on the knots, right? And you're kind of still working around on it as the ship is now kind of turning now towards the shore, kind of taking the wind, the wave kind of starting to rise in the back, and you hear the voice speak out and echo across the world. As the water is picking up, lifting the ship forward towards the shore, you see the tense trees and structures of the ironwood begin to <laughs> rise up ahead of you. And that sinking feeling that the ship is going to go headfirst into that column of rising dirt uh, still kind of 
makes your belly clench. You know, it still kind of gives you that queasiness as the wave is kind of pushing up behind, water raining down the front. Shadin kind of still trying to shout orders. You see the lights of the pixies kind of illuminate the deck of the ship as this sickening memory continues to play itself out. Um, you're unable to get the, the line tied down with that seven, unfortunately. Yep. Um, so as the, li- as the ship is kind of pushing up forward, uh, the line kind of starts to s- slide through your grasp. Uh, roll another athletics. Kind of get back a hold on it as the ship is kind of is it starting to kind of escape you. Uh, athletics is uh, fifteen again. Fifteen. All right. So you, you're able to kind of work your heels and you press again. You you lodge your foot up against one of the uh, the railings of the ship, um, and you're able to kind of stop the progress. And you're holding on to the line as the ship is kind of lear- lurching forward now. Right. You can feel that the the wind in the sails stops being so much a factor of, of its movement as now the water is kind of taking it and bringing it closer towards this rising earthen column. The pixies, the light kind of illuminates the base of the ship and you see the bow begin to lift as it starts to kind of start surfing as they kind of begin that fly spell that raises the ship into the air as the back of it is still being pushed forward by the wave. Um, you see Pen slip and slide down, making their way past you, right? The hand reaches out to grab you as they're sliding down towards the forward of the ship. Can I try um, to grab him? Okay, roll a uh, dexterity saving throw. Bobby! Yeah, I just reach my hand out toward them and just and just try to... Fucking Christ! The dice know that this is a fucking nightmare scenario. Yep, uh, exactly. Five. A five, the, the little hand, wet fur, is briefly in your grip, but slips past, and you see them kind of slide down the front of the ship towards this kind of, like, darkened maw, the, where the earth is rising is now leaving this looming shadow over, and you hear the voice again speak out to you. Of organic life will always be one of death and destruction, a perpetual cycle of competition and subsequent eradication. Our arrival has always marked the end of the struggle. You will extinguish while we will adapt and advance. I think very uncharacteristic to to Finn's demeanor. He just looks up and just screams like just this guttural, deep, mournful, angry scream uh, to where toward wherever this voice is emanating from. Um, and then he looks over. I imagine he sees Shadin and Pen both in a in a familiar position of going over. Mm-hmm. Yep. He runs to them, and instead of trying to wrap the rope around them, he cuts it with his sword and jumps over. Okay. To try and grab nice. them in hopes to maybe swim up with them. Okay. You run towards the edge of the ship as Pen kind of hits the railing after kind of losing your grip on them. They kind of slide down. They hit the they hit one of the railings and kind of start tumbling off. You see as the the body kind of goes over the side, splashes into the water. You look back as Shadin is also kind of pivoting now, twisting towards the side, hands outstretched. You dive off the side. Um, yeah, just... going in after them, mm-hmm. um, after your scream to the sky, you <laughs> dunk down into the water, and as you do, you wake up. It is a shock as you kind of <laughs> come to wakefulness. You find you are sitting up in the small room. Folks giving you some space. As they kind of look, looks of concern, worry, curiosity, mingled as they examine you, coming to wakefulness in a very dramatic fashion. A few moments, gather your wits about you. Start to settle in, crest. Yeah. 
Does he look? I imagine uh, he's drenched in sweat. The his hair is yeah. yeah his hair is not up. I imagine just with the movement, like the bun is completely disappeared. So just this long black hair, just sort of pushing out of his face, looks pale. Uh, you know, definitely in the throes of 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 coming down from from high adrenaline. Good morning. Morning. So to look at everybody, it's just do the same thing he tried to do before, and just, just smile. Oh. It's a deception check. Oh, that rolled out of my dice roller. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. No. No 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 no. Deception. I do have advantage. If you'd like to take it, up to you. Nah, no, 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 no. Baby, that is still an eight. Or mask. Press, what did you get for your insight? If you'd like to take it. Um, Bad, but better than that. I got a 12. Sure. And I'm sure your passive, too, is also much better. Yeah, my passive. Oh, yeah, my passive's 15. Yeah, so you can tell Finn's... Um, they kind of like awkwardly hover for a moment and then they say breakfast and they hand him what looks like almost like the fantasy version of like a pre-workout bar. (laughs) Just like very condensed, like it is nothing but nutrition as they (laughs) hand you one of the royal bestiary treats that are like clearly meant for like long travel it's gonna give you a um it's gonna give you it's not a lot because we're low level but two temp hp okay he will say did you eat they are eating one also. okay great he'll take <laughs> it yeah i got yeah <laughs> it looks chewy i like it's, chewy it is very chewy all right he'll <laughs> just sort of take a bite Fun about finn likes chewy likes chewy <laughs> he's, a, he's a savory guy um yeah, thank you very much. Um, how did your how did your looks go? Your uh, uh, conversations. Uh, I waited for you to have them, but I made these, and they will hand him two healing potions that you can add to your inventory. Oh, that's um, it's very kind. Thank you. I figure you're doing me a heck of a big service coming with me. Want to make sure you make it through. I'm a bit of a meat shield. I don't want you to be that. I like being it. All right. <laughs> I like Thank being you. up front. You That's said good because I'm shit at it. <laughs> you said two. <laughs> two, two potions of healing. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind. Yeah. I make things. I make things. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. What, they are also, because they have means of doing this, they will also hand you a potion with what seems to be like little streaks of webbing in it, as they also hand you a potion of climbing. Ooh. Did you get this from Curly? Uh, no, I did not. <laughs> Although I wonder... I'll have to look at that recipe book, see if maybe I can make something of that. Recipe book? Yeah. Yeah, I, I met this fascinating fair bulk in the Whispering Jungle. His name's Wubba Dub Dub. I'm sorry. Yeah. His name is what? Yep. <laughs> have you ever been to the Frog Grove? No, I haven't. It's it's just sound. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's just sound that's incredible well thank you very much uh, I appreciate it well I um, he sort of takes the bottom end of his, his shirt and just kind of wipes his face Ugh. yeah ready to go whenever uh, so. do you want to talk about it You don't have to. That's not what I asked. Hmm. You're very good. Um. Maybe once we're out of here. All right. Yeah, if 
few looky loos. Kind of. He's got some things. That's fair. They'll they'll take in the looks. They're pretty used to that. They're like, all right, you're right. It is time to go. Um, Have a so good day, everyone. Some... Yep. And sort of walk out. Yeah. Bye, Finn. <laughs> Bye, Finn. You'll find your dad. <laughs> Are you my dad? Uh, <laughs> looky, looky, looky. <laughs> they, they kind of tick off on their fingers. So we got some things to do. We want to talk to the rangers. Great. See if they have any insight to what the fuck is happening in Damaril. Yep. You wanna talk to Serena, see her scouting. See what she's seen, yeah. Check in on the water drake. And I would like to at least take an hour to start acclimating some of the rangers to the Pomerantulas. I think Could I need to acclimate as well. Protection. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, that makes sense. That all sounds good to me. I might look for uh Maybe a replacement. He kind of looks at how dingy his sword is. We're heading out. I might need something different. <laughs> All right. But we can tackle that after everything else. I'm not a big... Van Conquer too. I'm happy to travel with you. I'm just not a big fan of shopping, so I'd rather put it off till later. <laughs> what a mood. All right. <laughs> uh, Finn, real quick. Though. Yeah. Um, you, you would know that the ranger barracks, uh, mm. they... You have a good supply of weapons. Yeah. You possibly get your oh, shit. There. Hold it. So. We're heading to the ranger barracks anyway, so we could just kind of conquer. Perfect. One stop shop. And as far as like, uh, you know, outdoor equipment and stuff like that, yeah. probably I'll be able to help you out there. Um, Sounds good. So roll a quick history check, though, Finn. Oh, me? Oh, no. I you. I don't want to. You. I don't want to. <laughs> You're, you, you have to eat. Be, I said <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. But. You should. Um, <laughs> You're gonna want to. Is a, a fuck off. I hate it here. A 15, 13 plus two. Okay, uh, 15, easily enough. Uh, you one know you can probably get like again equipment, weapons, that kind of stuff over from the Rangers. Perfect. Um, you are also aware that there is, um, Umi Jade Bone is something of a, uh. A dwarven yep. enchanter, mm -hmm. right? Who might have, you know, magic items or something like that of that nature. If you would be interested in that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and then the last, like, I think, you know, equipment kind of thing in town would be in the Temple of Korame, the reconstructed Temple of Korame, mm -hmm. where a an individual would have things like spell scrolls and okay. consumables like that of that nature, magical yeah. consumables like that. Got it. Okay, so if we Rangers Barracks first, see what they've seen, Serena, introducing everybody to, to Curly and, and, and the like, but would you mind if we, uh, as the day's winding down, head over to Umi's place? I'd love that. I haven't seen her in a minute. You know Umi? Yeah, yeah. I went on a little retrieval mission for her. Well... That's very good. Um, cool. That sounds uh, more than good to me. Great. Right. <sighs> Talking about it. Talking about it. Sure. As we're sort of walking forward. Um, <clears throat> bad dreams. Same bad dream. Uh, as the nights go on. Um, the last wave is what they're calling it, right? That experience right. plays out exactly the same. I'm in no position to save the captain, Serena's father. The outcome's always the same. I hear the voices that spoke from the moon that day. I, I'm i sorry. I never experienced that day. I don't know what they said. He'll relay what they said. Sure. To I can them give you guys a in full. I'll, I'll yeah. text you. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just figured he's heard it every night since it happened. So I imagine mm -hmm. that shit is ingrained in his skull. So oh, he, yeah. he will tell them fully what it is. Almost to this uncomfortable level of familiarity. Mm -hmm. So... 
That's what they said. And then the water just... <laughs> just left. Captain fell off the ship. I was unable to retrieve him. No matter how hard I tried. Still unable to retrieve him. No matter how hard I try. So, um... I get a good reminder every night of what I failed to do. I'm sorry. Does not stop me from continuing to try anyways. I wish I could say something comforting. The world is shit. But I'm just hoping to make it a little less shit during my time here. So I'm I do my best not to let it weigh me down. It's just a shitty reminder. Sorry you're going through it. I think you're right. I think the past is insurmountable. There is no... There is no best in the monsters that beat you. You just have to go forward. And best whatever is waiting. The past I'm is... sorry. It's okay. I appreciate it. The past is static. There's nothing to be done to make it different, but I'm just still learning how to figure out how to come to terms with what it was. Well, when you find out, you let me know your secret. He'll just kind of put his hand out. You'll be the first person to know. Thank you. Of course. I'm, uh... Next in Quav Mountains. That's where I'm from. Next in Quav? Is that the correct pronunciation, David? Next in Quav. Next in Quav. Uh, it's N E X A N. So, spoiler, apostrophe, Q U A V. Swear I hope the captions figured that one out. Uh, it did. It did <laughs> no. not. No fucking <laughs> mix way. Mixing cough. Mix, I believe. <laughs> mix and <laughs> Um, that's where I grew up. That's where I left. It's Northern Mountain region. Do I know anything about those mountains? Roll survival. Eight. Wow. Ten. Okay. Um, you've never been there. Um, but you have heard like just kind of like the way you would know about like Everest or something in the real world like in terms of like just location right like you know where the Himalayas are mm -hmm. um you know the next and cough mountains are like on the north western uh peak of the continent so quite far from here mm -hmm. with that can I request we take a break something has come up yes. and I need to take care of I it I think a break is perfect perfect right? so yeah we'll, take, we'll pick up with you guys arriving at the rangers conclave in uh, just a moment okay alright we'll see you guys perfect. in about 10-15 minutes bye bye, bye, -bye.
we're back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Yes. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome back. So, uh, continuing on with Heroes of Hysteria, Unearthed Inheritance. Our uh, our duo here have just uh, reconvened in the Ironwood, and you guys are setting about um, the different tasks to prepare you for your journey. First on your list was the Ranger Conclave. This is a place where you expect to procure maybe some items um, and maybe get a little bit of information about the area that you could be delving into. Perfect. You guys approach, it is a large tent, right? It, you can see it is built with a ironwood frame. The tarps that make the exterior are heavy and weather-worn, but reliable. You kind of enter into this kind of like overhanging uh, foyer, right? Um, as you approach two rangers who are kind of, you know, in the midst of talking, see the two of you approaching and crest. There's a, the first kind of eyes kind of like fall on you for a second. They're like, oh, I don't know you. And then they kind of fall up in. They're kind of like, oh, a reassuring nod. Like, ah, uh, they kind of nod. Mr. Reese, as you guys enter. Um, you can trust Cress as well. Do you see Crest? These folks are in kind of leathered armors, uh, green, earthy tones, right? Different races, but you can see, you know, there's some halflings. You can see a few half elves, a few wood elves are also quite populous amongst them. Um, and they are dressed in armor similar to that of your previous allies with whom you had a faded journey. You enter into this tent and you can see immediately that there are, this is a very functional space. There are chests and crates in the back right corner, um, along with scrolls and charts kind of lining the side. Uh, there is a large hanging um, chandelier that provides and illuminates the room very effectively. It's a very structural object. It's mostly made of woods with just, you know, some candles and some continual flame spells uh, added on the top. Um, looking around, you also see, you know, there's a few, like, cots, right? Um, and in the center of the room, though, there's a large wooden chest, right? It's so large that they actually have, like, a tabletop plank over it. So it's making sort of a makeshift table. And standing over it, you see a high elven woman um, with long blonde hair tied into a very functional braid but with a streak of black that kind of cuts the hairstyle and stands out um very sharp eyes as they kind of you know loom over and you can see a couple of scars along the cheek and along the upper arms where you know they've probably encountered a few wild creatures as they're kind of pointing from different areas on what looks to be a map and they she turns up at the entry and goes ah good morning mr good morning finn what brings you by so early uh, morning. Uh, my uh, friend Cress and I are going to be headed north. Yeah, and you recognize this individual, Finn, as Lenza, the head ranger. Lenza, good to see you. Um, yes, we're headed to Damaril, uh, at behest of Sage Elder. And the information that Cress brought here for us. Um, uh, Cress, if you want to. We have reason to believe that Granny Mel Smith may be held there uh, by a, an illithid contingent or some of their thralls. Granny Mel might still be alive. That's quite some news. Well, if you're headed north, happy to offer what assistance I can. Um, anything I can give to this operation, let me know. I've got weapons, information, um, Actually, I should have a contingent group exploring some of the northern hills of Borazor's Pass. Perhaps they will be by soon. They were, they were slated to come in, leans back, looks to someone who says, Yesterday was it? And the person responds, um, They're a bit late, but I'm sure they will arrive any moment. We might be able to even give you some information about what you could encounter along the way. That'd be great. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Is there any particular equipment I can help you with? Ah, uh, ideally. Yeah, um, he sort of <laughs> takes his shield, uh, which has seen a lot of wear and tear 
over its time uh, soared equally, if not worse. Um, it it looks like it's run through a cheese grater. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm looking for some sort of replacements for these. Hmm. If you have the sock available, sword, sure. It's not hard to come by. Um, Jeffrey, bring us a sword, please. Long yeah. sword, right, Finn? Long sword, yes. Who's that? Who's that? Yes, long sword. Appreciate it. <laughs> long sword, um, yes. I appreciate that. Come, uh, a gnome comes forward again, dressed in kind of the same outfit. Come, comes forward. Hey, you are. Passes you a long sword. Uh, it is seen. It is a. It's worn, but certainly in better nick than yours. As you draw the blade, it does slide smoothly out of the scabbard. That's what you like to see. Yeah, that that would work. Lovely. Um, I do have an odd request, though. Uh, I can give you the sword as a replacement to melt down for parts, but I'd like to to break down the shield myself and uh, make it into something, if at all possible. Well, that's certainly an odd request, but um, I know you, you Goliath, so have probably your own rituals. So, of course, you'd be willing to indulge. Um, and as far as shields go, um, I do have the run of the mill, should you that be what you're looking for, but... I might have something a little bit more interesting if you be keen to see it. He looks over at Chris. Something a little bit more interesting. I do love that. As do I. Sure. Love to see it. Very, very well. Jeffrey, bring out the visage. The what? And Jeffrey goes, <laughs> oh, certainly. Um, moves <laughs> back to the and uh, you know, opens up a large chest hops up and kind of balances on the rim of the chest and kind of tilts forward legs kind of hanging down over the side Rimming it. um as he kind of like yes as he's kind of like <laughs> rummaging around you can hear metal shifting and then eventually <clears throat> pops back and you can see a large round disc in a uh worn cloth uh in the hands brings forward and passes it over he's like a this, kid on christmas this one's <laughs> This one's interesting. Um, he keeps got saying it that a... word, and I keep wanting no. to know what you're talking about. I suppose it's better seen first. He lays it down, pulls the cape off, and on it, the face of the shield, you see an actual face. Uh, you see there is a kind of a, a bald, masculine head, and the expression is very neutral, right? The eyes are closed, the mouth is a straight line. It says... Um, that right there is a shield of expression. As you use it, it can change change its image. Um, some warriors, I've heard, uh, will often wear such a thing to further intimidate their foes. Um, but it's a little eye-catching for our purposes. Um, and you can also see it's it's a like a metal disc. Right? It's like a round um it's a, if you can kind of think of like the you know the shields in like troy it's kind of like larger mm, round discs it's, it's like a captain like america that. shield yeah but maybe even like a little bit larger bigger yeah yeah a little bit wider right um mm. functions to say functions just as well but with the added bonus of um I suppose smiling when you kill the scum or looking at it with reverence looking at how the world's become Would you be interested? Yeah. If it's not going to much use here, absolutely. It's not, but maybe mm, if this, you wouldn't mind earning it. This is my favorite part. Also, you surely, surely you couldn't have thought you would walk in here and not leave with a job. I asked nicely, but the job always seems to follow. What could I do for you? Well, it just so happens, um, as you probably can tell, we've got a lot of green branches in our, mm. on our tree right now. <laughs> I'd like them to have perhaps a little bit of experience, maybe a little bit of training. You are, Your skill with the blade is well reputed. Um, as you know, Zion Full Rest will never let it rest. Uh, that's odd. Um, <laughs> ironic statement. But likes to regale us all around the campfire of how you slew that creature uh, during the last wave. So perhaps you maybe show them a thing or two. 
In exchange, you have the shields for free. <laughs> but you'd have earned it. Not to wail on your greenhorns. How you brush them up however you see fit. With your experience, I'm sure you, you've probably identified more things than just fighting. It'll serve well as experience. Of course. Happy to help. <laughs> Trademark. Um, that fantastic. Point, yes. That point, uh, Leader Linza. I am aware of a number of giant pomerantulas in the vicinity who are friendly to humanoids. Hmm. And I know a little bit of their dances, what they mean. We could shore up more folks to be able to replicate those and communicate with the Pomerantulas. I think you could use more defenders. That... That is some out-of-the-box thinking. They've normally kept it themselves in just below the towns or in the deep caverns of, around the region. Never really much thought of using them, perhaps, as allies. You say you know their dances? You can communicate with them? Yeah, they're they're not too bright. Um, we've got a couple words going. They understand goop, which is the, um, you know, the moss that grows on the ironwood that sort of eats away at it. They yes. eat that moss, which is good for the community, obviously, and uh, is hmm. an incentive for them. They understand the term ally. Uh, they, under they understand the term spider. And a, I believe I taught them enemy. Is that correct? Uh, or bunny. Danger? Bunny. You That's taught right. them bunny. So yeah, bunny, bunny, ally, and goop. We're kind of like um, the, the three big ones. Gotcha. I want to... That's the thing. I want to right. teach them... I want... I think I have a way of communicating the concept of danger to them. Mm. Um, but I would need to train one, and then I could learn that dance and teach others. But maybe while Finn is providing his expertise... To the hmm. uh, greenhorns. Very well. That's that's an excellent proposal. That is something that we could really perhaps use. Their webbing is useful. Their venom is particularly potent. And if they are managing some of the slime that eats it away at the ironwood, and only help keep the city that much more intact. Seems like a win-win. Very well. Why don't you all go ahead, instill into my young, instill into my students or my my amateurs some semblance of skill, and I will reward you, Finn. We've got yours settled, but you, I might have something for you too if you're able to uh, garner us some right? additional allies. Well, we've come across all manner of useful objects. Well, I would. Love a mysterious, useful object. I'd also love uh, musket bullets, if you happen to have any. I will look around. Jeffrey, do we have any musket bullets? Or Jeffrey! <laughs> just running back I'm fucking forth. looking for it! I'm doing my best! <laughs> That's exactly it. He's like, I heard I heard them say it. Yes. I already started. <laughs> I know. I, I imagine when somebody asks for something, I'm going to be the dickhead looking for it. You don't have to call my name! <laughs> Jeffrey is my Listen. favorite. <laughs> Yes. Six of the two of you and goes, hmm, perhaps a bit more active duty once in a while would do him some good. I agree! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so, um... With that... I'm so sorry. Yeah. There is another matter. They're gonna wait mm. until Finn has started to head out, and they're going to remove from their pocket Gilda's um, mm. religious symbol. They're going to press it into Lenza's hand. Um, I don't know if uh, Sage Elda told you already, but I was traveling with uh, some of your rangers when things went upside down. We were kidnapped, and I regret to inform you of the deaths of Morgane, Yanvi, Corbin, Indigo, and Gilda. Thank you. 
You were outnumbered. I'm sorry. It's always hard. Good rangers. I hope they died with honor. Dad protecting everyone. Ryan. We will speak their names at the fire tonight. Thank you. He takes the symbol. Okay. And two of you are now on your way. Um, as you make your way out, you can see there are a couple of. There's about ten. Ironborn Rangers, all very young, uh, not a large age, de not a large age demographic here. Most of them seen quite a, not too many winters, as they would say. Um, as they look, uh, you know, curiously at the pair of you, um, I'm wondering. I thought an instructor was supposed to come. Out. Yes, well, we said to line up here. Hmm. See what happens next, and they kind of are slouching, you know, uh, twirling the weapons. One of them is kind of, you know, inspecting a dagger, right? The other one's, you know, not really sure, you know, struggling to kind of unclap, unhitch the sword from all over the scabbard and, you know, get it out um, as the two of you approach. Keep your wits about you, lads. Lads. Huh? Anyone. I will be your instructor for today. My name is Finn Reese. You see a lot of a lot of heads kind of nodding, right? People kind of straightening up. Um, you can see a lot of recognition in their face. They've, again, you're like the only Goliath in town, and they've <laughs> picked you out easily enough. Um, good, good morning, Mister 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 Reese, Instructor Reese. Finn's good. They all kind of. Good morning, Finn. As they all kind of chorus. For the third time, good morning. So, you're all looking to be a little more comfortable with weaponry. Indeed. All right. He'll draw his sword. How many are lined up? Ten. You five, come at me. Five of them kind of look to each other. Okay. Um, one of them kind of draws a sword confidently. The other see the others seeing that start to kind of draw the sword as well. You see a mixture of short swords, scimitars, long swords, um, as they're all kind of like lining up and they kind of start to spread out around you looking at each other unsure as they're looking at you and then looking to back to each other um just we just go would you give your enemy this pause flank him what they, they said hear you speak crest and they kind of start positioning around spreading out um taking different positions now they're you've got five of them around you finn blades pointed at you now that they're flanking, he's going to take his longsword, turn it to the flat side, and kick up dust and sand to the face of um, the group of them that are on his right side. Okay. And then he's right. going to move, because I assume that's an action. He's not yeah. going to do anything else uh, except move yeah. really purposefully toward the other group. Okay. Um, roll, let's call this an attack roll. Okay. All right. Ooh. Actually, no. Whoop. Tell you what. Do you have anything that gives a saving throw? Do, do you have any abilities that would? Uh, yeah, I feel like this is this would be more a saving throw on their part against that. Like, yeah. Are you looking for like a spell, like a DC? Yeah, like a spell save. So DC I have. Yeah, my uh, the DC they would have to beat is. What you? What happened? A DC thirteen. Okay. Because that's the that's the DC for my fire rune. Perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah. So you you kick up the dust, right? They they fail um, as the three of them. These are the three at your back, right? They kind mm -hmm. of like the that with the flank. They think they nod to each other and they kind of make a move in just as you kick up the dust and they kind of blinded um, start staggering back. The other two uh, who you kind of charge into, they prep the weapons um, and as you kind of step into them, they're going to take a quick. They're going to attempt to attack you. Okay. Um, does a seven hit you? <laughs> no. 
as they kind of they one kind of swings forward. He'll um, just take that same flat end of the sword and just turn it to the ground. Nope, not like that. Um, I have the stumbles, height advantage. The other one kind of singing at you back. And wow, the other one was a three. <laughs> <laughs> that one he'll they just like you. kick the shin and just kind of push them off course. Yeah, they kind of stumbled. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say that one's prone. Right, inexperienced greenhorns. Um, okay, back up to you. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Cress, feel free to jump in yeah. at any point. You see, see Finn is kind of just handling these five um, as they're kind of like staggering to their feet, getting dirt out of their eyes, uh, <laughs> trying to pull the blade out of the dirt where he shoved it into the into the floor. There is this odd sudden stature to them as their hands kind of clasp behind their back. Your advantage is your numbers. Utilize them. Work together. They'll kind of like nudge one up to their feet so that they don't have to use the yeah. movement to unprone. Okay. Um... Persuasion, or I, I would even consider intimidation if you'd like to try it or something. Can, but. can I, I would, can I, babies. can I give them my inspiration for this? No. Sure. I, oh. d- no. I do, I do it because this is a co-teaching moment and I love that. Well, okay. Um, then what is that? 16 plus two, 18. Yeah. 18. Start to kind of. They start to kind of stand up, look at you, Cress, and then as they kind of go from looking at Cress and kind of taking in the instruction, they look back to you, Finn, and you can tell there's a little bit more fire in them, right? As they kind of mm-hmm. start to step forward, uh, readying the weapons, they start to kind of fan out again around you. They kind assist of, right? each other. Mm-hmm. They'll look back at Cress and just give a wink and a nod. Instruction. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll say it's your turn now, Finn. Uh, and then they'll go after. He will... Um go to grapple uh, one of the green horns and um, not put the blade against his throat, but um, if he's successful, he'll put the the pommel uh, to him. Uh, okay. So he's just going to attempt to grapple. Yeah. Tested athletics checks. Ooh. 20. <laughs> Nine. So you're good. <laughs> so yeah, he yeah, takes him. It, all, this big Goliath arm just wrapped around like his body, and then just the the back end of the blade or the back end of the the handle of the sword just put up against his throat. Move in. I slit his throat. Hypothetically, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so use your numbers. And they kind of. Where is he they, vulnerable? They... Help your friend. Get him um, where he can't see. One of them kind of calls out. As it's kind of passing, you caress and go, um, behind? Like, Perfect. No eyes there. So one of them, <laughs> uh, two of them step behind you, Finn, as the other two are kind of like at a 45 degree on either front of you. Okay. Um, they're going to take their moment to swing. Okay. And make their attacks. Right. See. Given he's occupied, I think these are auto hits. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Because, yeah, the rolls weren't great. So, yeah, um, they they come in all taking their advantage at you. You feel the flats of the blades kind of whack at you in, like, the shoulder, <laughs> right, uh, in the in the legs. Uh, one of them even kind of gives you, like, a little punch in the kidneys, right? Uh, so you kind <laughs> of, like, fumble the blade, kind of made it up as you went along. And Jesus you, Christ. You see, there's the short oh. sword just laying on the floor forgotten. Um, oh. As they all kind of pile in on you, trying to get you. And the, the assault continues as they try to get you to release their friend i so um, with the punch he does kind of like let go it's like, fuck <laughs> yeah boop, the other one kind of drops down um and they kind of now spread back out and they face you again all right good very good what do we say we make this a little bit more interesting eh he'll run in and just attempt to with the flat end bop one of them on the top of the head okay roll an attack roll <laughs> No. Not even a okay. ten. As an eight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They. He manages to avoid it as, as the as you kind of lunge forward with the flat of the blade. Uh, um, actually, what happens is uh, one of the allies sees you kind of coming in and kind of scoops around the shoulder and pulls them out of the way mm. as the blade kind of good pops job. Down. Um, I don't have line of sight. I'm looking at a target. I'm one man. Good. <laughs> All right. Start nodding to each other, kind of feeling more confident. Um, one of them, who's kind of closer to you, Cress, goes, All right, what now? Disarm. Get him on the ground. Take away that advantage. Mm. 
Yeah, they all look to each other. All right, you heard them. And they kind of now surge in on you, Finn. Mm. Um, contested strength checks, I think, as okay. they're all going in. If they're all working together, help each do other. they have yeah. advantage? Helping each other. Yeah, they're at advantage. The dice are kind to them. That is a two for an eight. Nice, because or at for a, just a strength check. Yes, uh, athletics. Oh, oh ath okay, athletics. Yes, that is an eight. Then, okay. which is good because one dice was a natural one. The other dice was a nineteen. Hey! <laughs> so they they swarm you, Finn. As the blade can, as you kind of go in for the the boop, right? And the blade kind of hits the ground. Um, as the one gets pulled back, another, a third, just kind of lunges forward and just grabs your arm. It's a halfling who just kind of jumps forward and is basically wrapped all around <clears throat> your whole entire arm, um, <sighs> kicking away at the other hand until you kind of loose it. And then the other one kind of comes in and starts, two, two more kind of come in and start prying the hilt out of your hand. One of them starts punching your fingers until eventually the blade is released. And they've got you kind of, they're... One of the uh, the two start kind of pulling at the leg and trip you, and they start to try to pin you. Oh. <laughs> this is like Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a bunch of little people just. <laughs> He's like, I yield, I yield. <sighs> Excellent work. A cheer erupts as they kind of stand <laughs> to the feet. Yes, and they kind of like jumping around, patting each other on the shoulders. Um, and you see the next group, the other five who didn't join in on the fight. They were kind of like nodding and along at each other and kind of come forward and start congratulating everybody. Their morale definitely bolstered. Good work, Chris. Incredible notes. I'll say, I'll say they leveled up to one. Hell yeah. <laughs> Babies. Oh, level one rangers. Little level one rangers. All right. Well, yeah. So that, their favorite enemy is just Goliath. <laughs> Not Goliath, Finn. <laughs> um, Cress stressed a very important learning opportunity here. Communicate when you can. You're not going to be given that opportunity in battle. Learn each other's movements. Get comfortable to where all you need is a look. Take advantage of that. I think you're all going to be fine, Ironwood Rangers. All nodding at each other. Good work. And thank you, Chris, for your incredible advice that led to a spleen bruise. I'm very sorry. No, you're I'll not. Fix that later. Mm. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was very impressive. They'll look at oh. the five who um who weren't fighting during this time. And now I have something that I would like to teach you that you can pass on to these folks. Everybody pulls their weight. Um, they'll kind of, can you all line up for me? You will kind of take file in front of you and kind of stand forward. There are resources in these woods that have gone on. Have any of you met the Pomerantulas? Hmm. If you kind of look around like saying like you've heard of them and then there's one um dwarf um you know uh with kind of these bright green eyes uh shock of black hair and kind of like a very close-knit brown beard and goes i we've we've seen them in the mines once in a while they're friendly they like humans they like that you feed them the slime that grows on the trees eaten away at so, right, you've seen them do it. <laughs> don't spend too much time in contact with it. Get yourself a club and are able to collect that slime. They call it goop, and I'm going to teach you a few of their dances so that you can communicate with them. I think if you have a large enough collection of slime, you can keep them around the perimeter of the ironwood. And they'll protect it. They're, they're all very curious. They're they're looking at you like you can with just your passive insight. You can see there's a, a expression of like almost like is this even possible? Like it's weird. I'm not gonna front. <laughs> um, I'm all lie. It is very odd. But um, I'm going to stay in a humanoid form because that is how you'll be dancing. 
So they essentially um, like take balletic point. Say this is your starting position. Everyone. I have spread out and we'll go to assume the position. Uh, roll a performance check here. I'm good at that. Finn, if there's any way for you, you think you can offer advantage or anything to this, you want to get um, in on this somehow. I think free. he's just, yeah, I think he's just going to be behind Cress and like, like a, like a, a yoga's TA. Uh, he'll just be doing what, <laughs> what. Adjusting people. Yeah. And he's like, That's That's awesome. back up. no, right. You want to lay, you want to raise your arms up just a little bit. They're spiders long and spindly. Just do it. It's good. It's good. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yep. That's what you want to do. All right. Do. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> He's uh, like fighting so, his fear and like, God bless him. So performance from Cress, I think an advantage. animal handling. Oh yeah, at advantage, yeah. Sure. Hell yeah. We'll say that gives that gives oh! Cress advantage. So twenty. Not twenty. Nat 20. For a total of twenty-four. Yeah. Hey. Okay. <laughs> they they watch, right? They're kind of taking the posture and Cress assumes the position without any sort of like tremble or strain. It's very fluid move into it as uh, several of them are kind of like trying to mimic that same fluidity, that same confidence. Um, and with Finn's aid kind of going around, fixing postures, adjusting legs, you know, kind of maybe scooching them in, uh, the flat of the blade every now and then, tapping a knee to kind of twist it in forward. Um, yeah, they assume the first position uh, as they are following you through this crest. Um, so they will teach first ally, um, okay. just that this is how you communicate to them that you are a friend. It helps if you have a slime with you. Um, All right. so I don't know. I can assume that Curly is back in that cave, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Curly, uh, not anywhere within immediate vicinity for sure. Yeah. Probably went back um, to the family group, but yeah. They are going to... I have not yet taught this to the spiders, but I will before I leave. And they will create a dance for danger. Okay. Um, and as they're doing it, they will... Um, their face will kind of slip for a moment um like eight eyes will suddenly appear where there were only two and then slip back as they like go into the mind like the mentality mm -hmm. of a spider and think about what is dangerous to them um and they create this dance utilizing that connection to the creature nice nice uh all right any other Words because I think we're just like bunny and goop, yeah, check. bunny and goop. Okay, all right. They spend the most time on ally and danger, as those mm -hmm. seem the most important. Okay, roll another performance check. Um, continued at advantage with Finn's assistance as you were kind of working through the motions, and Finn is kind of assisting you to position the individuals and able to, you know, relay that in for that communication. The 15 plus 4, 19. 19. Nice. All right. That is, those are some good rolls, guys. Um, you're confident that these folk are coming along. They're, it's, it's starting to stick a little bit. And I think we're going to give them a level as well. Yeah! I think we're going to give them a level as well. Um, but I'll let you guys choose. I think Druid oh. might be appropriate here. Oh. That is amazing. That fucks. Hell yeah. That fucks really hard. Hell yeah, that fucks. Okay. So level Especially one. Especially because that gives druid. them access to like speak with animals, some which is spells. super yeah, yeah. super good. Yeah, yeah. So they they're learning oh. the, some. Can I flavor this? Yeah, absolutely. Please. As Cress is going through this motion and like going into the mind space of what it is to be a spider and what is dangerous to them, the same instance of like multiple eyes appearing where there were only two occurs on the faces of some of these children as they <laughs> like start to get into the same uh headspace as they yeah the same kind of the rhythm yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah absolutely um <laughs> that's awesome finn every now and then you go up to a student and you can just see the two eyes just kind of go into multiples for a moment and then kind of come back mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm so sorry 
Um, He's yeah, just like you guys. After after some teaching the students, you guys can return to to Lenza. Um, Lenza here, Lenza, as you all enter. So I hear you guys have um, managed to make something of our our greenhorns. Something. Yeah. Word from the practice yard is reassuring. Well, can't remember this was supposed to be. <laughs> what a so move. relatable. What a move. Right. What does this person sound not, like? <laughs> it's not. Let me know. I'll, we can go through the Rolodex. This is going to um, be me tonight. I haven't DM'd consistently <laughs> in about six months, so this is going to be that. There you go. Um, <laughs> what do they sound like? <laughs> so, as promised shield is yours you can go ahead and add a shield of expression to your inventory Oogie. that's so cool and then i hear we've got some uh some spider enthusiasts among our number now you do that'll really be useful i tried I'm sure it will and i hope this proves useful to you and passes you a cane that seems to look like as you kind of handle it, it's it's a very smooth cane. Very kind of uh, the, the the outside is like very, you know, per, almost not perfect, but like you know, very manufactured, right? It's not a natural kind of rod. Um, and as you kind of handle it, it's quite light. And as you kind of flick, it kind of extends. Um, says this here is a rod of collapsing, oh. a pole of collapsing, pole of collapsing. May it prove you? useful to you. One of those Thank things. It's always nice to have around. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Very much. So, is there anything else? Um, well, you said you were on a journey to Damaril. Well, Jeffrey here was kind enough to prepare these for you. Um, <laughs> I'm and... sick of this, Grandpa. <laughs> It passes over a, pulls a pack onto the table and says, uh, it's, uh, it's an explorer's pack. One of you can add an explorer's pack to your inventory as well, so you'd have all the contents within that. Thank you. And do you know, um, what have your scouts told you about Damaril recently? Any information, any news? No, unfortunately not. Um, I can tell you what I knew of the town before the fall, but as far as recent information, I've got nothing for you. Which is actually getting to be a bit concerning. As I mentioned, we had a, a contingency, a, a small scouting party that went into Borazor's Pass, but they have not returned yet. It's now an entire day later. I start to grow worried. If the two of you are heading north, perhaps if you come across them, tell them to get their asses home. Something but, I think we can do? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Appreciate it. Um, and as for as for Damrill itself, um, well, it was a small fishing village a long time ago. Well, it was a small fishing village before the fall. Um, mostly f sailors and um, these fish folk. I believe they were called Koatoa. Made up the most of the village. Farmers. Um... The town of Damaril was essentially the breadbasket of the Empire. So, if there was any town that we were hoping would be able to outlast in terms of resources, Damaril seemed a promising prospect, but we have not had any word from that area for some time. The leader of the town is a baron, much like Elda. A baron named Prana Trufan. P R A N A. T R U F A N. But there has been no request for aid or any such things from the region. It's been rather quiet. We've not gone past the Iron Hills. We have reason to believe it's dangerous, that it may be some sort of outpost for the Illithid. Illithid. 
entities connected to the mob. Like the scum. I hesitate to say like the scum. These are, some of them at least, were once people. It's disconcerting news. I'll certainly keep an eye out for any more aberrations. You say the Damaril might be a outpost of theirs or something? It makes Whether sense that... if it has so many resources. Hmm. I just want you to be prepared for anything that may come out of the north. Jeffrey, I have an assignment for you. If you wouldn't mind, gather the rangers. We need to remember our fallen, and I have something, and this, inf this is information I'd like to have shared amongst all of them. Be wary about the northern front. All right, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Cool. <laughs> Another job for you. You. Jeffrey's the it. busiest dude in the Iron <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The gopher. Like, like Finn gets a lot of credit. It should be Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Finn's taking all the credit for Jeffrey's hard work. I just it's feel like Jeffrey has this growing, see. like, hatred. For <laughs> 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 Fucking Oh, prick. God. Oh, well. Canon indeed, think my friend. I think what Cress will do to speed things along mm -hmm. is they will outsource the task of seeing that these individuals have become like have gained some of the abilities that they were growing familiar with only a few mm -hmm. months back. Mm -hmm. They will outsource some tasks to gloved, collect the slime, um, and to practice their dances with the Pomerantulas. Uh, go ahead, roll persuasion performance, however you'd like to pass along this instruction. Give me a skill check. Skill challenge gonna... with, the, with the flavor of your choice for me. Yeah, the flavor is going to be a little odd. Um, they're going to perform, they're going to perform as if they were in Titus's shoes. Oh, um, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and that's a 22. Very so there's just this this expectation um, as if they're speaking to um, like their own contingent. They've seen how effective it's been in the past. Yeah. And knowing how young these individuals are, they think that just like it's not intimidation. It's not persuasion. They're just yeah. like assuming this role of authority. Is that clear? Do you understand? Yes, we'll be. We'll get right on it. Come on, lads. Let's collect us some goop. <laughs> Safe travels. Practice communicating. Thank you very much. And they head off. All right. So, uh, let's see. Rangers in the bag. I believe Serena was next. Serena and Umi. Yep. Okay. Uh... Serena would be the next kind of as you Places. make your way from columns to columns, yeah, it's traveling along. Uh, you come across a lower level that is quite remarkable as you first appear, as you first see it. It is a dock similar to the kind of dock you would have seen on the shores, right? But this one on the top of a large stone column, the docks themselves kind of jutting out into the open air. A uh, large wooden kind of crew house structured at the end, kind of tucked into the hill. Um, you see, you know, all manner of folk moving around, uh, you know, lugging ropes and stuff, uh, moving crates. Uh, and you can see them kind of pulling a lot of this equipment onto a singular ship that is tied at the center, so on either, in the center of the two docks, in the center of the two fingers. Um, and it is propped up on these large wooden... Um, uh, stands so that it can just kind of rest without water. And you can see so the gangplanks cool. are very active um, as you see the water drake crests, a ship that you had previously um, been aboard 
back near the beginning of the year. Uh, Finn, you also see the same ship that you see every night. As the two of you make your way over towards the dock, uh, you see coming around the side of the ship a blue dragonborn um, feminine in qualities, a, the left arm kind of strapped up across the chest um, tightly and uh, walking forward with a scimitar over on the left hip, uh, a long uh, purplish golden cloak, uh, similar in cut to Finn, as you remember, and Cress, as you would remember, Shudin wore himself. Um, and the dragonborn is walking around, kind of giving orders to any the folks on the dock. All right, fellas, come on, man. Let me get this thing on the way. All right, I need them crates up on the deck. We gotta get them rations stored below. You, see if you can't coordinate with um, Ember and Ash, and maybe you get some of them lines rigged up for me, all right? As she's kind of moving around, she kind of sees the two of you, looks at a moment and recognizes you. Press. Really taken to it. I see. Things them change, man. Cress, how you been? They go up. They go up and hug her. It's a big, big hug. Um, even with just the one usable arm, uh, grips you close. I'm sorry. Looks, it looks you up and down, seeing like the tattoos and stuff that are kind of. You're looking a bit different as they kind of like they they tower over you at a bit six change, six foot change. You're looking regal as fuck. Jesus. Well, Whoever that is. You know, I've had to <laughs> had to step up since since my since, since things have changed. I heard and I'm sorry. Well you know at least the night before he passed. We had something, we had, a, we had a fight actually, but he came back and we managed to work it out just before he left. So that was, that was nice. Gave me a little bit of closure, you know, knowing that he was, he was trying to protect all of us, you know, he was doing what he had to do. There's this look of guilt that just clear as day on their face. No insight check required. I'm glad that you two were able to find that together. I'm you sorry know, I'm... we weren't there. Alright. I'm sorry. You look like you've been through some things too. I'm sorry we wasn't there for you either. You're back now. Pats you on the shoulder. Says. Besides, if I have anyone to thank for helping make sure things between me and my father had passed well was this one right here. Talked to him and kind of inspired him to reach out, you know. Dad wasn't the best at communicating all the time, but after talking to Finn, he felt a bit more comfortable about it. Chris looks up at Finn. He's staring at the floor. I'm not surprised. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Or you just, hopefully this is just a social visit. You're just stopping by and saying <sighs> how things are going. Wish that was the case, Captain. Unfortunately. Fortunately, you just have a few questions. If you're amicable to it. Always. For you, anything. What you need. You scouted north, have you? Nah, not not so much, but um, west a bit and to the south. Um, come, let me sh let me let me show you something. It takes you into the waist of the ship, uh, through the gangplank, towards the back into the captain's quarters, and you see um, captain's desk and reaches into a uh, reaches onto a shelf, pulls out a large scroll and rolls out a map. Map that looks. Mm. <laughs> ah! to go Are you okay? Like no. this. <coughs> you just so you can see, it's a lot of it's kind of blocked. Oh, up, so. that's so cool. But Mine's you do loading have a, still. A, Sorry, my roll twenty is mad at me. But 
So you see uh, a map depicting a mountain range, a forest, um, some foothills, and some different corners. Um, points to the center to a plateau with dotted with many trees and says, this here, this is us. This is the Ironwood. Mm. And beyond that, up to the knot, there's a few more mountains. I haven't really gone that much further. I think the rangers might have been doing some scouting up there is what I hear. Okay. Off to the west. Are you seeing a button? Is... Yes, I'm seeing Okay, it. okay. Just making sure. Off to the west is a lot more. You get into what was once the Briantera Basin. Now, we call it the Briantera Dust Bowl. It's deserts, a few craters, and... Looks like a lot of volcanoes and some volcanic activity towards the center. So we haven't gone much past that. But that smoke rolls straight west into the hills then. So if you are going into the hills, you might come across. It might be visibility might be bad on some days. Smoke kinda of rolls in over. That's good to know. But yeah, thank you for the insight. Can I unroll because I still have this? Uh mm-hmm. the Wild Hunts world map and try and like fill in uh details for serena's like that eastern front that i've explored yeah 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 Yeah, so the the one you kind of been working on with with luna ways back right and there's a little bit of a bittersweet sentiment as you kind of roll that out and have the memory of you know working on this map and sketching it in with luna yes and you're able to kind of line up um what you had previously penciled in from your journey. I can do it on another screen for you. I will have it for next session yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, we right. don't have to like visualize it now, but they'll just give her those details. The um, um, the like ruined lands in the north of Hank, um, mm-hmm. the swirling black storm that they saw around Muldan or Don, the mm-hmm. changes that have been seen in the whispering jungle the um statues that were unearthed they'll just mark it all down for her just try and expand this map as much as possible and then they'll take her notes and transcribe them onto their map all right yeah absolutely uh roll a survival check Ah! um math 14 plus Hmm. 7 21 21 yes you are able to successfully copy and transcribe the map um, for both yourself and Serena, uh, with with your assistance, uh, there are now two kind of world maps, and you can see the territory is greatly expanded by what, with what you have provided. Um, and Serena is just kind of in awe, and it's like, you got all of this yourself, like, as you start and kind of now recapping your journey a little bit. You started down here, kind of pointing to where the frog grove is, and you can see it's days worth of travel. It would have kind of, that press would have kind of made Finn. Yeah, it's been a busy week. Um, There are some gaps, obviously. Um, There are some uncharted regions. There may be a lot of um, UNT activity up here, and they'll gesture toward um, where the Temple of Sleep was. And some undead activity there also. They'll actually, like, draw a little skull. (laughs) That that may be a problem. They'll demarcate too, where they saw the deep, um, spider-webbed hole in the ground. Yep. That is a no-no as well. Um, <laughs> lots of hazards. <laughs> lots of hazards. It's a good thing we sail the skies now. Can't do it for long, but with the help of the pixies, then we get a little bit. We get a little bit farther every time. That's incredible. Better at it. Where have you been then? Are you trading with any place? We were trying to. Um, first up, we went down to uh, Azafast to see if maybe how, how they had fared. But when we got there, the city was still... The city is in this kind of strange <clears throat> crystal dome. And it's closed off. It's, it looks like a few refugees and settlers, you know, whoever survived, they started making these small communities outside of the dome. But about it we offered them a little bit of a little bit of help a little bit of you know trade but it's a very small little community right now and they don't really got much um but mostly just between here and as for the most part of it 
And the, the what? The Azorian Order? They won't let you in the city? Yeah, as far as we know, it the dome seems to be impenetrable. Like, There's nobody guarding it. There's no words going in. No words going out. It's just hold up. Hate that for them and for us. Yeah, so... Let's see what happens there, but for now, it's just collecting... It's just collecting people outside of it. Well, I suppose I should let you know that Sra Aras has been unsealed. I don't know if you want to start trade with them or not. I know that there's a lot of uncertainty. Hmm. But there there may be resources. Um, there's a group called the Sanguine Sodality that I believe to be allies. I can talk to I'll talk to Elda and see if she wants to open up any kind of trade. Hey, where's where's Pim? Wasn't Pim with you? And and Granny Mal? We're all sort of scattered to the winds. Um Mania is following a lead to find her parents in Muldan or Dom. She should, no way. And um Granny Mal may be in in Damaril. Hmm. So that's why I Don't go to Damaril. Don't go to Damaril. All right. Don't I, do it until we know more. I wasn't thinking about it, but I'll talk to I'll talk to Granny Elda. See, this this sad ass thing might be might be something to be interested in. Sounds promising. I know they're looking someone. for allies. If they're looking for allies, as far as I know, we're still looking for allies too. So just beware the uh, cabal of the slumbering serpent. They'll draw for Serena their symbol, the coiled mm. serpent. Okay. These bitches. They um. They're looking to bring back who, uh, a god who might be aggressive. All right, all right. So, um, there's that exchange of information you've gotten. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just like no, vomiting. No, no, we have stuff. I mean, no, it makes sense. Um, so we've, they've, we've kind of shared an exchange. Um, Serena kind of explained to you the things that they've scouted. She scouted, um, kind of in the southwest there. Um, was planning a trip to go west, but given this information, might consult with Elda and possibly consider a trip towards the east instead. Um, marking again the storm that you, the storms and hazards that you'd outlined. Um, feeling more confident about going at least a route with some knowledge. Okay. After that encounter, I believe Umi Jadebone was the last one on your list before you set out. Hell this yeah. is correct. Okay, so you make your way from the harbor um, across a rickety stone bridge. Well, not rickety. It's pretty, pretty good, well-constructed stone um, <laughs> ironwood bridge. Um, and as you approach, you see a windmill up ahead. It's kind of the wind, the blades are just slightly turning in the breeze. Just nothing too crazy. There's a groan. As you approach, and you can see as you come in, there's a sign. I mean, reading the sign, it says in Dwarvish and in Common, no magic! Exclamation point. And in the Dwarvish one, does anyone speak Dwarvish? I don't think so. Nope. I sure do. Okay, you see that it says no magic beyond this point. Hmm. It says no magic Guys. beyond this point. Oh, uh. Which is Ume? They just yeah. yell. <laughs> yeah, um, you yell out. Uh, sound kind of carries out, and how often do you yell? I'm guessing, eventually, right? The door kind of opens up, and you see a little, a dwarvish head poke out, looks to you, holds the goggles up. Hey! Runs out, and you can see Umi Jadebone, a, um, a hill dwarf, um, who is, you know, blonde of hair, blue of eyes, um, emerges from the room, uh, a leather apron over the body, which you can see is starting to show the signs of pregnancy. As she emerges, she goes, it's good to see you guys. 
Come on in, come on. I, I have a lot of magic on me and I, I feel like it might be unstable or something. Oh, just just don't cast any spells. Mm. Oh, I misunderstood. Yeah, if you as long as you don't cast any spells, we should be just fine. But we do have a few things moving on over here and sometimes magic gets a little bit weird if too much of it's happening at once. That sure. makes sense. Sure. But how can I help you guys today? Glad to see you, Cress. It's been quite some time. You're... You're obviously... You have news. Yeah, um... I, I didn't realize it, but... I guess Thorin and I got... You know? So... And here we are. Gonna make ends meet, and... We just keep us safe. <clears throat> Finn will just sort of tap the lantern at his side, uh, kind of grabbing the handle as it lights up. Does he see something similar to what he saw when he was here last? Mm -hmm. As you look around, um, no, this time, but sweep. Put it out. Sits down, um, resting. Uh, so, Cress, it seems like you've been through a lot. I'm just going to recap that you guys had yeah, a journey. Yeah, we catch yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. We catch up a bit. Um, a little bit of conversation eventually. Well, I'm certainly happy to see you both. Uh, I'm assuming during the course of the conversation, you guys would reveal about Damrel and stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That they want to head there. Grant to look for Granny. Well, I might have a few things that could be of use, um, but I was still working with a few commissions. Um, you know, just again trying to make ends meet for a bit. What do you um, take for for pay? I don't know what is uh, valuable now. Gemstones really are are fantastic. Helps derive some of the uh, equipment that I would need to. No one still the ruins. Um, part of the craft. All right. You have I, it. I have some things I can trade with you. Help make ends meet. Pay sure. for anything Ooh. that might be useful. Yeah. Um, well, what have you got? And we can talk and see. Um, They'll pull out. They. I have one malachite, one obsidian, and, and two tiger's eye. Well, tell you what, for those two tiger's eye, I've got this here. Uh, pulls out a uh, a horn fashioned out of some hollowed out animal horn. Uh, runic markings along the outside. Written in some kind of tight dwarvish script that you recognize immediately, Finn. Um, and says, well, this here horn is... I'll, I'll trade you for those two tiger's eye. Um... It's a, it'll, it's something you can use to signal each other without uh, alerting anyone. Mm. If you designate the listener, they're the only one that can hear the call. It's actually very nice. Otherwise, um, I've also got, pulls out a metal suit of armor. Uh, it looks like a half plate armor uh, with, again, some runic etchings. Um, it says this one doesn't do anything too crazy, but um, if you'd like, it can make you kind of smoky. It'll add a little bit of uh, flair to your outfit. I'm still working the craft. I'm still not quite as good as Thorin, but I'm getting by. Um, I'll give you that for the Malachite. It's nothing too crazy. Are there those things you'd like? Um... Half plate's better than chainmail, I think. Is that correct? Sure. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking at a numbers game here. Uh, math time. Math time. Math time. This is actually it wouldn't, unfortunately, make a difference. Mm. Um, yeah, it wouldn't make a difference. Um. No, I'd say keep that and still continue to practice your craft, but this, the communicating one-on-one -on -one seems helpful. 
At least to me, but... Yeah, that definitely seems it. You can tell what direction that person is in. Yeah. Yeah, you should be able to, if I did it right. Um, I'm sure you did. But I'm I'm pretty sure this one's... Yeah, thanks. You look Absolutely. at it and examine it. It seems like it, it looks like they... You can see the runes are tight. Um, the script <clears throat> is clear. The magic, as you handle it, you can tell the magic has been enchanted successfully. Yes, you definitely did a good job. They will hand over the two tiger's eye. And in that case, uh, one of you can go ahead and add a horn of silent alarm to your inventory. Finn! What was it? Sorry. The horn of silent alarm. Yeah, horn of silent alarm. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. okay, cool. Um, I had a bit of a question, not ho. Jesus Christ. Um, oh, of silent alarm. Ho of silent, silent alarm. <laughs> Great in a pinch. Um, <laughs> so I was thinking, I got a, I got a new blade. Uh, was wondering if there's anything you could do to maybe give it a little more of a oomph. I know it's in a pinch, so no is extremely understandable. But just thought to ask. Yeah, no. Um, unfortunately, nothing I can do on short notice. I'm really sorry. No, no I'd, apologies. I'd, I'd maybe a day or two. We're looking to. He kind of looks at Chris. We're looking to leave here pretty, pretty quickly. I think so. That's more than fine. Sorry. No, I appreciate it. Maybe next time I'll have something for you. If you're looking for weapons, I, you can start. I'll keep an eye out for you. Sure, I appreciate it. Um. No, thank you. Um. I think that's all I had. It's just good to see you. It's good to see you too. And, uh, I hope your journey goes well. I hope you guys come back soon. Me too. Thank you. Hmm. That's the plan. Have a good one, Obi. Think... Oh, I'm sorry. No, they're, they say the same thing. They mm. say their goodbyes. And I think as they're heading out, um, they look at Finn. What do you say we identify the things we found yesterday? Find someone who can do that in town and then um, head out. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, then I start looking around town for someone who sure. can identify. Yeah, do I know anybody who could? Do, you do, actually. Yeah. Um, over Can't in you? The temple. Oh, fuck. I can. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't know if I'm purpose. Anything, I was like... I, I knew you could, but I was, I was going to like... Eh, I think got hey, my brain? Flatlining. Um, okay. You, you... I can. Jesus, fuck it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's cool. Yeah, we had a conversation yeah. about it earlier this week. <sighs> a lot of conversations, I think, of yeah, are swimming around. Okay. So, yes. So I will use my runic ability, um, Gebu, to spend a minute with the stuff we got yesterday, hmm. and identify it. Okay. And let's see. I just want to see if there's any like, is there any limit on uses or anything? Or do you um, I list? believe. I th uh, let me double check. We'll end it up now too. No, nope, okay. you're good. Got a million different pages that I'm trying to open up. Sorry. Here we go. I got. <laughs> da, 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 da. This is a reading stream. Welcome. We're so um, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no limits that I can see on it. Okay, then I'll just spend a couple minutes doing each one. Yeah, so identify. there's there's about looks like four items that would need identifying, um, and you are able to do so. Uh, the first is a or magical items. Uh, the first is a spell scroll. It is a spell scroll for the spell Ray of Enfeeblement. Oh. The Jesus. next is a small, or like fist size, a small for you, Finn, uh, a fist size kind of amber gem with a flex of red kind of worked through it. And as you kind of hold it up to the light, it almost looks like glinting 
glinting fire, like you're holding fire. And sure enough, this is an elemental gem of fire. Why? Holy shit. Then there were also two potions. The first is a kind of large, round-based potion in a very worn flask with a cork stopper um, with a red fluid inside, which you can easily identify as a potion of greater healing. Mm. The last item is a thin vial of dark, viscous-ish fluid, more viscous than water. Um, it has kind of a red tinge to it, and it is in a. It has a cork stopper that is sealed with a wax seal, and this, my friend, this is an odd one. So you hold this up, you identify this as a blood of the lycanthrope antidote. This Ooh. is a material that would cure lycanthropy. And those are the items you have in your possession. You recovered from the Smith Underburrows. And then I have in my notes that there were other gems beside the magic one, yes. but not what they were. Yep. So you they're not have. Magical. They're not magical. So these are the non magical ones. So you have a one blue quartz, a piece of hematite. Another malachite. And a piece of obsidian. Hell yeah. That is your your loot that you had acquired from your last session. It's a pretty good grab. Can, can I ask what this identify ability looks like? <laughs> yeah, please. Mm, yeah, I didn't flavor that. People want to know. Commune, the people want to know. Um... I think as he sits there with these things, um, you see almost emanating from the shoulders first these owl-like wings, uh, spectral in nature, uh, just sort of made up of runic patterns that sort of wave and waft over these items. Um, and after they do, you see individual feathers begin to fall off and the runic outline begins to swirl around the forms as they're almost assessed. Um, and after that minute, uh, you see the runes sort of dissipate, and then Finn just kind of nods. Same with the other one, nods, it fades. And after a bit of time, the the these large, uh, I, I will flavor this as, as like a, a very, just large wing span, just sort of kind of settles back into his tattooed runes uh, as he just sort of, Okay, it reveals that information. <laughs> Can you fly also? No, nope. With my Sorry. experience on Cuthbert, not used to that in the slightest. All right, just wondering. Why? Oh. Just seems to be a theme. <laughs> sort of, oh, it's a... Um, a lot of, lot of flying folk these days. Um, Helpful without water. Yeah, it is. Um, I'd like to learn how to myself, too. That'd be a very good sight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you guys have reconnoitered, completed your list of folks, um, acquired some map. Uh, identified your items. Is there anything else you'd like to do in the Ironwood? You set off on your journey. I don't think so. All right. Then the two of you make it back to Cuthbert, who has been kind of exploring around town. Uh, you see as Cuthbert kind of comes back in as you meet by the the memorial where all the flowers and all that stuff are. And those statues. Um, the statue of Granny Mal press of you can't help but look at it as you're prepping for the journey. But Cuthbert merges um, over on the wing, lands, eager to meet you, comes forward, nuzzles. You see that there are a couple of um, folk who have kind of gathered around and they're excitedly cheering 
as he lands. A lot of the nervousness has somewhat subsided with exposure. Mm. Um, and they look a little bit more comfortable around him. A lot of folks are still weary, though. And it's kind of Cuthbert kind of leans into you. <laughs> Warm breath. Pushing, knocking blades of grass over. Sending them up in a flurry. Step on his new saddle. His shark skin saddle. Ooh. On his back. Added with the sidecars that serve now as Finn's stirrups. Step aboard, aboard, step into the saddle, Finn climbs on. And two of you take one look around the Ironwood as folks are looking at the two of you now mounted upon this golden drake. People are kind of like nodding, whispering to each other, um, patting each other on the shoulders, onlookers, kind of making a little bit of a stir as Cuthbert kind of <laughs> rears the head back, scratches, <laughs> runs forward. Two large beats of the wing. People kind of start scattering out of the way as they make room for him. And the two of you kind of aboard his back, you feel the lurch of the body as it pushes forward. The muscles beneath you as he kind of grips the edge of the stone pillar and launches off. Wings flare out and he beats as he heads off into the horizon towards the northern Iron Hills. Crest Druid crafts just this spray of endless, like ceaselessly druid craft over and over these bright yellow petals that fly on the wind across the town mm. as they leave. Awesome. Yes. And as the petals kind of now drift in the wake of the wings, you see them kind of forming swirls as they kind of make their way around the town. Kids running out, kind of grabbing at them, right? People kind of holding each other as they look at you, two of you kind of take wing and the shadow kind of now um, just gliding across the fallen forest below and the mountain range ahead. And that's where we're going to end today, as the two of you take to the wing, heading off into the Iron Hills. Um, the Iron amazing. Hills. Thank you so much, David. Thank you guys for playing. No, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Checking out. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Um, David, where can people yes. find you? Where can people, people support you? People can yeah. find me. Um, Instagram thing is working out. I still. believe it's Heroes of Hysteria, but I think Hannah may be making progress think, on it. I think we got kicked out because we didn't use it. So Whoops. we might have to reset <laughs> it. Um, All right. So that will eventually be a thing. There will be an Instagram. We will let you know. Um, other places you can find me, uh, if not here, would be the Delta Scripted YouTube channel, where we also have the Heroes of Hysteria Sansi Saga campaign, the sister campaign to this one, happening around the same time in a different part of the world. Be to check it out. Um, that's, that's me. You guys? Amazing. Button, go for it. Hi, I'm Button. My pronouns are they, them. I'm Blue Blue Button on social media. You can find me here on Sundays a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> That's very true. Um, I think that leaves me. Hi, everybody. My name is Alec. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me all places on the internet at CommuneDM. You can also find me here tonight. Uh, with the premiere of Known Realms to Lesh, it is happening. The myth has become reality. Uh, I will be your archivist for this incredible campaign that we are starting tonight. Button is going to be there. We have Luzalia Art, the governor. We have uh, Aegon Thetic and Zen Meta. It's an incredible crew. And and this is a, a labor of about six months. So I will cry. Um, Me too. <laughs> I will be doing that as soon as we start. But until my tears flow, socials are the best way to stay in contact with us and see what we're doing and when we're doing. If you're wanting to catch up, the VODs are going up more consistently. So uh, thank Woo! you for that. And then um, Button and I are working on a wiki that will be posted soon that will have information on the campaigns we have. So Heroes of Hysteria, Unearthed Inheritance, No Realm Selesh, any one-shot, few-shot mini campaign that we air here. Uh, there's going to be a wiki for it. So Yeah, we're going to have recaps. We're going to have character pages. We're going to have campaign pages. Yep. We, other info. we sat in a call for a couple hours and fought the formatting <laughs> for you. Um, there was a point where Button and I were just like, I think we're done. <laughs> um, I'm going to cry. Uh, no more. <laughs> but with that, we will see you guys in the next adventure, which just so happens to be at 6 p.m. EST tonight. So uh, double feature Sundays are going to be really fun. And we're excited to have uh, more content here for you guys to take in. So with that, we will see you tonight. Bye. 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 You tonight.